Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Network on uh, Saturday, June 2nd, 2018. This is episode 1493. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by LastPass. Join over 13 million LastPass users and start managing and securing your passwords today. Learn more at lastpass.com slash twit. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash techguy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches, all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number, 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. You can still call if you're outside those areas. Say you're in Adelaide, Australia, you could still call. You just use Skype and uh, it should all work. It should all be free. 888-827-5536, toll free. Uh, the website, I should tell you about that, techguylabs.com. It's a great place to go if you wish to get on, uh, you know, you wish to get on the show but you can't or you're yelling at the radio and you or you're, or you're driving and you're hearing something and you can't. So you want to have that site handy because whenever you feel like it, you can go there. It's free. There's no sign up. And you could find, you know, links to the things we talk about on the show and a comment section where you could say, Leo, you're wrong, you ignorant fool, whatever it is that you know, makes you happy. TechGuyLabs.com. There's also a great chat room at irc.twit.tv. You can join that. There's lots of ways to play the home version of the Tech Guy show. Monday is WWDC, the Apple Worldwide Developers Conference, and we've been so excited because everybody's been saying, oh, this is great. Finally, we're going to get some new Macintoshes. They announced new iPads and new Macintoshes at WWDC last year. You know, even though it's a developer conference, this is one of the few times uh, Apple can get in front of the press and, you know, and, and talk to them. And so uh, they often announce uh, new products. And then our hopes have been dashed. I've been saying actually for a while um, that you should wait if you're going to buy a MacBook or an iPad. You should wait until uh, Monday, until June 4th, because that's when, uh, that's when Apple traditionally announces new hardware. But I think according to Mark Gurman... He is the guy who writes for Bloomberg. He, he is like the king of Apple rumor monsters, <laughs> rumor receivers, leak, leak guys. He knows all sorts of stuff. And he has said, and, you know, I, I have to think that if he says this this close to the event, he knows that there will not be any new hardware announced on Monday. Now, I still would wait. Because he could, he could have made a mistake. But I still would wait. But Monday, that's not so far off. But I'll be very disappointed if we don't see new MacBook Pros. I've been holding, you know, I've been saving my pennies, putting putting $100 bills in the piggy bank. <laughs> it's expensive. You can't do it by quarters and pennies. Putting money in the piggy bank, saving up, hoping that there would be a new MacBook with an improved keyboard, because I just can't abide, and I'm not alone, I guess, but... MacBook Pro keyboard from last year. Um, they can do away with the touch bar as far as I'm concerned. I don't need that either. <sighs> but I guess not. It's not to be. We're really a little overdue for some things. They haven't announced a new Mac Mini in ages. A new Mac Pro in ages. Since 2013 is ages. That's five years. But um, no. Apparently, rum the rumor is no. So I just, I wanted to tell you ahead of time so you won't be disappointed. And then uh, there was a, a video today from one of the, uh, you know, 
usual suspects in the Apple leak community about what the uh, what Apple will be talking about, which is the next version. Uh, we know this Mac OS 10.14. And there's some video in this. And what will there be? What will be the exciting new features in, uh, was it, maybe, maybe it'll be called Mac OS Mojave. Because there's the wallpaper has pictures of sand dunes. Mojave would be a good name, wouldn't it? It's been California landmarks for the last few years. You know, Yosemite. Uh, that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, I can't remember the rest of them. Um, Sierra, High Sierra, Yosemite. Mojave, fit right in. So let's call it Mac OS Mojave. What will be the big feature of Mac OS Mojave? Dark mode. <laughs> uh, now, you know when we got when we're gotten to a point where there's just nothing new on you can't what can you do? I mean, you can't stand the thing on its head. And if there's nothing kind of missing, nothing significant that needs to be done, then all you can do is things like dark mode. So instead of a white screen, you get a dark screen. People like that. <laughs> Probably not the hardest thing to add to Mac OS. I think if we flip this bit here. Look, dark mode. Oh, that was easy. Take the rest of the day off. There will be, I mean, there'll be some stuff under the hood. Uh, apparently, they're going to take the Apple News app, which is useless on iOS, and put it on the Mac OS, where it will be equally useless. That'll be nice. I don't. I shouldn't say that. Do you use the Apple News app? I don't find it particularly compelling. Actually, Google does a news app, which works on iOS. That's great. It's everything the Apple News app could have been, but isn't. But Apple's, you know, Apple's putting a lot of money into this, so maybe, you know, it's important. Um, that's it. <laughs> News app. Uh, there's some under the hood things. Xcode 10. If you're a developer, you'll be all all excited about that. But again, uh, not much you can do if it's already kind of done. That's what the problem Apple has with the iPhone too. It's every company's having this problem. There's it, it's kind of cooked. We need to find the next big thing. We can't just keep approving on the same old thing. So we'll also have iOS 12, the next version of iOS. Probably have a dark mode. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> what the, we had heard earlier this year that Apple was going to focus on not no more new features on iOS this year. We're going to do. We're going to make everything work better. Get rid of. There were a lot of bugs in iOS 11. Maybe fix all those bugs. So I just want. You know, I think Apple. Honestly, I think if I'd read it in the Wall Street Journal, I would have said Apple leaked this. That's their usual venue. They call somebody at the journal and say, "Hey, don't tell you I don't tell anybody I told you this." There isn't going to be anything new this year. They do that ahead of time to kind of lower expectations. And instead, it came from Mark Gurman. He's not their favorite guy. He gets a lot of leaks they don't want people to know about. But maybe they leaked it to him. Maybe he just talked to somebody. I don't know. And maybe he's wrong. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe there'll be all sorts of... No, it's going to... I think this all makes perfect sense. So I just warn you, I'll be, you know, I'll be, I'll be watching as will, will everybody and I'll have my finger poised on the buy button. Now I'm thinking, you know, well, I'm wait, I've been waiting for June 4th, but now I'm thinking, okay, so no new Macs. Let's look at the Windows PCs because it's time, you know, spring time for young man's fancy early summer to turn to a new laptop. And, you know, we've got these new, there's a couple of things coming along from Intel, the new six processor S sexy core what do you call that sex sex core <laughs> that's a good marketing name six processors six cpu uh, chips from intel the i9 optane which is an optimized bandwidth throughput and memory all of which might make very much faster laptops not from apple because well there's probably not gonna be anything new from maybe later this year they'll do that they probably do that later this year so i'm looking seeing what's out there Waiting for the people to announce the new Optane laptops. 8888-ASK-LEO. Uh, we'll go to the phones in just a second. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO. Look at this. Look at this. I didn't... This, I thought, looked really cool. I may regret this. We'll see. So, my very favorite computer from years gone by was a thing called the Scion. Remember that, the 3A? It was this size, this little pocket computer, had a full-size keyboard, had a Scion operating system, 
And I remember it talking. I took the guy to lunch who created. I said, "All you need to do is synchronize with my contacts and calendar on my PC." He said, "Oh, we'd ever do that. <laughs> Nobody wants that." <laughs> and I said, "Oh, yeah, I want that, but maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe you know your market." Then along came the Palm Pilot, which synchronized with the PC, and there went the Scion. So this is a new Scion, basically. I don't know how you open it. <gasps> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888, ask Leo. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. The star of our show, Kim Schaffer. <laughs> Hardly. Well, you're the Mindy to my Mork. <laughs> You're the Laverne to my Shirley. I always do the Roz to the Fraser. You're the just, that's just, actually more accurate, it's the isn't it? Accurate. Yeah. One. She yeah. was his producer, call yeah. screener. Yeah. Exactly. So uh happy June. Can you believe it? I don't even know where the past year and a half or two years. I'm went. still in the winter time. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. And you know, here we are. Hurricane season began again. Uh, it seems like we just finished that. But it's like 90 degrees out there. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Summertime. Actually, one of the callers uh, that lives right down the road said, do we have air conditioning? And I go, yeah, I actually have to wear a jacket in here. It's so come cold. On, so come on down, down if you live down the road. and you're, <laughs> Come and you're, visit us. It's cool. As the theaters, movie theaters used to say, it's cool inside. Yeah. So um, calls have been pouring in. Yes. We've got a traveler, David in Anaheim. He's trying to use his Google Maps on his trips, and it's trying to take him one route, and he doesn't want to go that way. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, he's like, they're yeah. trying to take him the fastest way. He wants to go the scenic way. I he want the scenic to, route, yeah, he says. Yeah, he wants to see if he can bypass that. All right. Can you help him? Yeah, well, I don't know. Line four. I'll try. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kim. To line four we go. David in Anaheim. Hi, David. Hey, Leo. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, been having a problem. I just want to take the scenic route like you were just yeah, talking about. It. I even went to Verizon. They couldn't help me out. Well, I, there are settings in Google Maps that say uh, avoid highways. That might start. That might be a good start. Okay. Uh, my first example would be I, I just want to go to Portland to visit my brother. I live in Anaheim. And I want to go via the 101. Now, there's alternate. There's a thing for alternate routes, but it's always like these obscure Highway 58 I see. or you Highway do want, You do want to go on the highway, but you just want yeah, to go... So, you don't want to go 5, which is the fastest. You right. you would now, like on to... My, on my desktop, I can do that by... You just bring it up and you drag the highway. Right. You put your cursor on the highway and drag it over, but there's right. no ability on your phone to do that. And I, I want to take advantage of the real time and the traffic on my phone. And I'm wondering if you have any uh, any an cure for this. Interesting. I'm looking at root options. <laughs> uh, best. See, this is where you turn off. You know, you could say fewer transfers, less walking. Uh, oh, I'm actually in the walking mode. Let me go to the car mode. That'll give me car options. I don't see anywhere though that it says take highway 101. Only avoid highways, avoid tolls, avoid ferries. Um, that's the customization. I guess what it's you not because you think the alternate the alternate routes would include Highway 101 because that's a pretty major highway. Yeah, just like the five. Yeah, but it does not. Yeah, in fact, I'm looking at how I would drive down to Anaheim from here, and of course, I have to get on 101 to start, but then it immediately takes me all the way over to five and the, for the rest of the way. That is the fastest route. So yeah, I wonder if there's a that. way to tell it. You should be able to, yeah. So on the, so that's interesting. So you can on the, on the on the driving directions on the desktop, you can drag the blue direction over somewhere else, and it'll snap into place, saying, "Oh, yeah, you could go this people, way." People suggest that I just get myself to Highway 101, and then it'll it'll. Well, that's uh, what I always do. <laughs> but what happens is you go to Highway 101, and it wants to take you to the fast. Take you route, back. back to the five. Oh, that stinks. It, it won't. It won't allow you to keep on the on 101. Right. Uh, I, at some point, it will. You know, it's it's going to continue to do the calculation, and when it's no it longer faster, it will give up. But that's not a good solution, is it? Hmm. Now I'm intrigued. I don't. There's several trips I want to take this year, so it's kind of important to me. This is where uh, computer algorithms kind of fall down, don't they? They don't give the human enough input. 
Um, I'm not sure why they chose to do it that way, except uh, it's easier. Is it possible to use waypoints and say, you know, kind of plot your way down through Solvang and or up through Solvang in that way? Or, huh. What do you do in New York? So I'm, I'm looking at people in New York. Some of our chat room are, folks are in New York. That's a place where there are multiple ways to get anywhere. And you may, as Mike B says, I like the Tap and Z bridge. <laughs> you may have a bridge that you prefer. How would you, uh, you have to just add waypoints. You have to kind of put drop, drop dots. Well, it seems like a lot of work. Well, you could say, uh, John's saying the way he does it is he sets a destination on the 101. So he says, I'm going to go to Crescent City. There's no way to get there easily on 5. It's direct shot from 101. It's on the way to Portland. Mm -hmm. So you say, that's the only, I think that's the only way to do it is to trick it and say, well, I don't want to go to Portland or I want a waypoint in Crescent City. And then it will say, oh, well, if you insist on going to Crescent City, I guess we're going to have to route you on 101. Shame that. I I understand. It just seems odd that you can do it on a desktop in the same app. Well, if you app. think about it, the desktop kind of lends itself to that because it has a mouse. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, you know, um, you can, of course, do it on the desktop and send it to your phone. Send the route to your phone if you prefer to do that. But I understand. You get live live traffic updates, I don't think. Oh, yeah, I think you still would. I think you're just telling it to take this route. Try that. I mean, I understand, uh, yeah, but this is kind of the way it is, unfortunately, in, in technology is it only goes so far. It can only be so flexible. That's a good, that would be a good request to send to Google. No doubt it's on their list somewhere. <laughs> but uh, All right, well, as, as far else? as anybody can, you know, I'm looking at the chat room. Anybody knows you can call 8888-ASK-LEO, but as far as anybody knows... The only way to do this is they're not such a bad. It's not such a bad trick to say pick intermediate points along the way that would force that. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to turn over. Yeah, he sounds disappointed. I think I've let you down. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Stephen Roner Park, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Steve. How you doing, Leo? I'm well. How are you? I'm pretty good. Okay. I, I just finally took the plunge after listening to you guys and got the. Uh, Got a Vizio HD uh, 4K M series. Nice. TV. Scott Wilkinson yeah, is like coming up in just a little bit. I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that. Cool. My question today for you is: those pre-installed apps that came with the TV, uh, like the YouTube works fine. I get full HDR. Uh, you know, when I'm casting, when I'm watching the YouTube app, the Netflix app only goes to 1080p. Yeah. It won't go to the full resolution. Yeah. But if I get my phone and I use the Netflix apps on my phone and cast it to the TV, then it does go to full resolution. That's because you have a 4K Chromecast, right? <clears throat> now, the Chromecast is actually built into this one. Oh, interesting. So they built in a 4K Chromecast. But the Netflix app, which generally, uh, in the case like this, comes from Netflix, hasn't been updated. Netflix, of course, has a 4K app. They have lots of 4K content. But it sounds like they're using an older Netflix app sad to say, in uh, that TV. And this is why I hate smart TVs, because they're only, in almost every case, half smart. The... I agree. I, agree. Yeah. I was up till 3 in the morning last night trying going back and forth, and that was the conclusion that I came to. So then I'm thinking, I've heard you guys talk about the Roku box. That's the way to go, is to get a... And I just wish I could buy this Vizio, for instance, with because you're paying for these this capability. Just give me a, right. give me the screen... Uh, and I'll provide the tuner. I'll provide the over-the-top internet. <laughs> Just give me a tuner with an HDI, I mean, a screen with an HDI input, and I can do all the rest and do it better. But they don't. Yeah. So you're going to spend a little extra for the smart. I uh, I would say get an Apple TV. For, they do for, a 4K Apple TV if you use iTunes to buy anything. If you don't, get a Roku. They're very good. Your second choice may be an Apple, a, um, Amazon Fire TV. Those are very good as well. I'm a Roku fan. But just get the 4K versions of those, and the app will be 4K. It's kind of, it's kind of uh, disappointing. I'll ask Scott about it, but it is kind of disappointing. Yeah, there actually is no tuner in this one either. Um, but yeah, they're slowly stripping stuff out. They actually, that, so that's the one with WebOS, isn't it? Uh, I believe I think, so. I think this, so it should be smarter. Hmm. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's uh, I've I've been doing new cables. I thought maybe it's cables. I've done everything. No, and I don't I think so. I think it's the app. app. What do you think, Scott? Do you have an opinion on this? Have you been listening? Well, I don't think. I, yeah, I have been listening. I don't think I've ever heard that the the Netflix app within a Vizio is only 1080p. That's very surprising to me. Well, it would just be the older Netflix app. Well, yeah, but uh, maybe, I'm pretty maybe check and see if there's an update. Is exactly, that... exactly. Because I mean, Netflix, I was the Netflix say, app is 4K. Netflix is pushing. For, oh yeah, 4K sure. like crazy, Steve. There's so. tons of it. Yeah, yeah. I actually uh, looked that up too. There's no way to update uh, just the Netflix app on that. Oh. It has to be uh, was a it full update. Just out of curiosity, was it the 20, uh, 2017 model, or was it an, uh, or twenty eighteen mm -hmm. model rather, or was it a twenty seventeen model? I think it's the 2017 model. Because um, that would explain hey, do you, it. Do you, do, you, do you know the entire model number? It's M. Yeah, it's um, M some number and then a. E3, sorry, go ahead. I believe. M the E3, I believe. I'm pretty sure E is 2017. Yeah, I believe it is. So. Just got it. Uh, maybe, yeah. the, maybe this year's model would be. Uh, maybe, but I don't know. Last year there was still Netflix was still doing plenty of 4K. Now I've got to do a little research into this because that, that's the first I've heard of it. I mean, I, this, um, this, this know, has I come have, up in the past called. where you have older apps on these things on the TV. And I agree updated. with Leo, though. You know, the the easiest solution is just get an Apple TV 4K. If if you're buying things on iTunes or a Roku, otherwise, that's exactly the advice I would give. Yeah. Yeah, because they keep those up those apps updated on the right. Roku, you can right? update. Yeah, them. yeah, exactly. Yeah. The fact that if the fact that it's not updated on the Vizio is quite surprising to me. So I'm going to look into that. Just remember, I mean, they have older processors. They don't, you know, this is these are not as well generally as well done as the standalone devices. Well, that's yeah. true. Plus, plus the fact that TV takes a lot longer to develop, right, than a little box. It has nothing at all to do with that. I I didn't update the um, the cable box to the to no. the. Uh, that's got no, nothing it has nothing. That, it has think. nothing to do with your cable box. It's all within the TV. <laughs> now, when you bought your TV, how long have you had your TV? Uh, about a week. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. When you first plugged it in, did it say, uh, you know, I, I I need to go update? Yes, it did, and it did update. And it did update, and you still have this problem. Yes. That's what you got. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah. just the Netflix app. But, you know, the YouTube one works perfect. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm i amazed, to tell you the truth. Um, I think I, the last time I reviewed a Vizio TV, it was a 2017, and I did get 4K. I, I looked at the Netflix app. I'm sure I did. Huh. Hmm. And it and it was 4K, so I'm a little surprised. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go look at that. Um, yeah, that's very very weird. The Ro I think the Roku box is the way to go, just to avoid all this. And you get a lot more, and uh, you get a lot yeah, more. I mean, yeah. it's that that's the one. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. That's okay, no problem. I, other than that, I love the set. It's Good. unreal. I love Good. it. You do. Is there are? Oh no! Somebody's saying something interesting in the chat room. You might have to have a 4K subscription to Netflix. Ah, that's yes, very good. And, exactly. And I do. So. I and you do. I do. I just I just signed up for it and got the 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 high def one, the most expensive one. There, there you go. And I also went go. into the, I also went into the settings and uh, manually put it to HD. You know, the highest one they got there too, mm -hmm. not auto. You got us. You stumped us. Okay. All right, we're gonna we gotta run for the uh, segment, but uh, huh, huh. Scott Wilkinson is here, the home theater guru. We were spending some time off the air uh, with Steve, uh, who was had a weird problem. Now we we determined he had last year's uh, Vizio. Correct. That's but, the uh, has the the letter E in the model number. But even that should be able to run 4K. Netflix, oh yeah, right? absolutely. And I, I was just—I just looked up my review of the M series from last year, 
And I was looking at uh, Netflix 4K HDR. Okay. So using then, the TV's app. So something's going on here that I don't get. He says he had upgraded. You do have to pay for net 4K if you're going to watch Netflix in 4K. He says Correct. he's upgraded that. And I yep. think that that's what's going on here. I'm sure that that app and that TV have that capability. Your review confirms that. So yeah. it's merely that somehow the signaling between Netflix and his subscription and the TV, I would log out and log back in is what I'd do, Steve. Just you know, to, that's not a bad just idea. Just try it just to see if you can convince <laughs> the TV that you've paid for a 4K subscription. When in doubt, cycle the power. Yeah. In, event, in effect, this is uninstall and reinstall. It's the same thing. Yeah. 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 Hi, Scott. Hey, Leo. Welcome How you back. Doing? It's good to see Thank you. you. We missed you last week. Oh, we had a great time. Where did you go? Uh, Huntington Beach, not very far, but... Um, <laughs> oh, over the river and through the woods. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you stay at a nice resort. Oh, we had, I love Huntington we went Beach. To the, yeah. We went to Farmer's the spa and had massages. And, oh, fun, it was great. Fun, it was fun, great. Fun. Well, welcome, welcome back. Anything back. new in your world, the home theater world? Scott's oh. the editor over at the AVS Forum. Yep. I, I did want to draw your attention to uh, just yesterday I posted our latest home theater of the month. Ah. And this month is particularly interesting and beautiful. Um, it's uh, The guy's name is Jeremy Shields, and he built uh, a Moroccan-style home theater. <laughs> he calls just it gorgeous. the Aladdin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow, isn't that beautiful? Is that gorgeous or oh, what? Oh, it's like a Sultan Seraglio. Exactly. Oh, that Very is well beautiful. Yeah. Look at yeah. that. We Thanks. do this every month. We we I feature a a home theater. You know, a lot of our members, AVS Forum members, have built their own home theaters, and and some of them are so elaborate and beautiful that uh, I now have this feature. I've had it for a couple of years called idea. called uh, Home Theater of the Month, yeah. and I show I show people how they built it, and in many cases, including this one. It's almost all DIY. This guy basically built this room himself, except for the shell. He had a contractor build the actual shell of the room in his basement because he had to move the HVAC and the, you know, do some heavy stuff. But everything else in here he did by, with his own hands. So uh, besides the beautiful decor, I, I'm guessing he put some pretty high-end equipment in here you know interestingly uh, yes it's very good equipment uh but interestingly for example the projector that's in there is 1080p not 4k and i asked him about that i said why why didn't you why haven't you updated to, to a 4k projector he said well i don't like living on the bleeding edge <laughs> He's, he said as an accountant i don't want to pay oh. all that depreciation <laughs> oh i love it i uh, for tax reasons i uh, decided yeah yes. yeah yeah that is so, hysterical yeah so he said you know when when they get more stabilized and uh, you know a projector the 4k projectors are down to like two thousand bucks that's right or you can get a used one for that's that sensible. you know uh, it makes sense to me synapse in our chat room says it looks like he's living in i dream of genie's bottle that's that's a uh, a reference only a certain uh, age certain of age would would understand. Yes. <laughs> I love I love that. That is really really uh, neat. I think that's yeah. Funny. Now does he have Atmos or is that also a little? Yes, he does he have does. Atmos. No, no, he he decided to go. It's not Atmos is no longer exactly bleeding edge. I'd say it's been around for a number of years in the home, and he does have a four speakers overhead. Nice and uh, seven speakers around and two subwoofers that he built himself. Wow. He built his subwoofers. Uh, and the speakers and the audio system is actually quite high end. Uh, there are Martin Logan speakers in the front. Um, and uh, Morant. It's interesting. State. He put more money in the sound than he did in the picture. <laughs> but isn't that the well, right way to do it, I think? I, I don't. Well, in, in many respects. I mean, this is one example of why 1080p, or what we call high def, not ultra high def, uh, is just fine. Yeah, it works beautifully. Now well, you don't sure get first... high dynamic range. That's you what know? I would miss. Yes, and me and... too. But high dynamic range from a projector is years behind where it right. is right. on flat panels. So he's right in that regard. He probably is worth he waiting. Is. Yeah, he, he doesn't is. want to buy another one in a couple of years. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wait till it. Wait till it's there. I have to say though, Lawrence of Arabia would look great. <laughs> 
And I, I, that may very well be the screenshot that's on his There's screen. There's a camel in the, in the ocean. Photo. Yeah, I, exactly. uh, I just bought the Blu-ray. It's weirdly coincidentally, I just bought the Blu-ray DVD of Lawrence of Arabia. Ooh. It is gorgeous. Yes. But not yes. HDR. I, no. It's not even 4K, but it but nope. that's the point is it can still look gorgeous. It can still look gorgeous. Even yeah. on a big screen like that, that's 125 inches across or so. I have to uh, say, though, I have, uh, uh, you know, of course I have that nice uh, HDR-capable 4K OLED in my uh, my mm -hmm. man cave. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that's interesting, I've been buying movies on uh, Apple's iTunes Mm -hmm. And they upgraded many of the movies I'd bought in the past to 4K HDR, if, that's, right. if that's available. I just bought a 1995 classic, Heat, with uh, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. What a oh. wonderful movie. And yeah. it was only, it was $5. It was $4 to rent, $5 to buy. So I said, well, I'm going to buy it. And I'm glad I did. 4K HDR. Yeah. From a 1995 flick. I guess somebody took the time to digitize it in high quality. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it does make so, a difference, especially for a movie like that where a lot of scenes are at night. Mm hmm. Yeah. Speaking of which, I wanted to just briefly mention Solo, the new Star Wars movie. Yeah. What? And I saw it in uh, at Dolby Cinema, at, where I was supposed to get HDR, you know, high dynamic range with super deep black, super bright brights. But it wasn't. It didn't look any better than a regular theater. And I was going, what's going on here? Turns out. Ron Howard and the cinematographer shot it that way. Was it shot they, in, uh, fi in on film? No, it was shot digitally. But they shot. They didn't shoot. Uh... But they they finished it. They graded it in and shot it. <clears throat> There's a lot of low light scenes in that movie. Yeah. And I would have expected the black levels to just be super deep and shadow detail to be great. It's not. But that was an artistic choice. It, it, it astonished me. What is they, the art? What is the artistic what it, artistry involved here? I guess they, you know that's what they thought, and yeah. a lot of people are complaining about it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you know maybe it met their artistic vision, but certainly not mine. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah, yeah. that was that was in. And now you know whether or not you like the movie. That I'm not going to say. I I kind of enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, it. I did. I, you, I, you did I I've it. noticed a disturbing trend, however, mm. in my life. Yes. Um. Uh, this happened uh, in Infinity War as well. I fall asleep during the big battle scenes. <laughs> now, you would think that that's con contrary to what one would think, but I think it's yeah. because they're so loud, noisy, and overwhelming and so kind of difficult to really follow. It's oh, just, wow. it's just yeah. visceral that I Your fall. I just, just go, uh, yeah, I'll wait till that's over. <laughs> that's hilarious. So I don't, yeah. I, but you know, you, the truth is, if you do fall asleep during the battle scenes, you don't miss anything. You don't miss much. You kind nah. of can imagine it in your head. Yeah. The only thing I, I, I was disappointed because it was an Atmos theater. I wanted to, I wanted to hear, and it, but I have to say, it sounded great in, in Atmos. It really did. Yeah. The, the, certainly the Atmos was very well engaged in the theater. I saw it in the sound quality, audio quality was very harsh. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that was, you know, that that was unfortunate. You kind of you kind of got ripped off, didn't you? I kind of did. Yeah. In a way. Our show today brought to you by uh, a, a company that we use and love, and everybody who's in business should know about. Last Pass. You know, um, 13 million users now, which is awesome. I've been a Last Pass user since practically day one. We got Steve Gibson, our security guy, to talk to the founder and the software guy and do an analysis. And he says, yes, this is the real deal. If you are using passwords to log into websites or apps, you are. Who isn't, right? You know the hassle this is, remembering them, keeping track of them, keeping them secure. And if you have a business and your employees have your passwords... They have the keys to the kingdom. You need to help them keep it secure, too. That's why, in fact, in my business, we use LastPass Enterprise. And as a benefit to uh, for employees, they all get a free account with LastPass for their own passwords because I want them to be secure, too. LastPass generates, stores, and uh, automatically remembers strong, unique passwords so that every app, every website has its own long, strong password. You don't have to remember it. LastPass keeps track of it. They automatically remember it. They even fill in your passwords on your browser, on your apps, on Android. On iOS, you have to do a little thing, but it fills it in. Anywhere, you, whether you're on your computer or your mobile device, LastPass is there. That's why it's the first app I install. Like, I'm setting up this new Gemini. First thing I'm going to do, put LastPass on it. 
and log in and get my credentials set up. I use two-factor two, which I strongly recommend. It simplifies password management. And if you're in a business and somebody's got your passwords, you need to use LastPass. Every employee has their own secure vault for managing passwords. You have permissions. You can have different vaults accessible to different employees. You can immediately revoke permissions, control it. Sensitive data, all of that information is encrypted at the device level with AES-256, no man-in-the-middle attacks. It's trust no one encryption. Nobody has access to it except you. I trust it so much, I actually don't just put passwords in there. I put my passports, my driver's license, my social security numbers. All my vital data is stored in LastPass. It's safe, it's secure, and I've got it on every device I use. Besides LastPass Enterprise, the one we use, there's LastPass Premium for personal use. LastPass Families, highly recommend that. Makes it easy to share passwords. You know, I have a folder for our family passwords. Put everything in there so that Lisa has access to it. LastPass Teams for teams of 50 or less. you got to have LastPass. At work, at home, fix your password woes. It's the number one most preferred password manager. It's the one I recommend and use. It's the one our business recommends and uses. It's the one Steve Gibbs, Gibson recommends and uses. Learn more at lastpass.com slash twit. Lastpass.com slash twit. Choose the product that's right for you. They have a, you know, you can try it for free too. I just, I am a huge, huge fan. In fact, if you're not using LastPass, why not? Right now. LastPass.com slash twit. All right. I'm setting up my Gemini 4. This is kind of wild. Oh, what's wild. that? This is my new uh, palm-based, uh, palm-top Android device. I don't know. This is very interesting. I, oh, I, is that the one with the little hardware key? Oh, my, my wife just got one of those. It was an Indiegogo or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm very intrigued. You know, my favorite thing ever was the Scion, and this is, reminds me very much of it. So anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have something to do while, while you talk. So here, let, okay, me, let me I'll get talk. this all set up. Go ahead. <laughs> so hey, everybody. I'm glad to be back. Uh, Donnie says, my 32-inch LG Full HD TV died after a seven-year run. I swear by LG products. Yeah, they make good products, no doubt. I look for another one, and the only options available in that size are 720p. Oh, that's interesting. So you, the one you had was 1080p. And yes, I can tell the difference even at that size. Okay. I ended up getting a Samsung uh, UN32J5500, only because it was the only model offering 1080p at 32 inches. Why is that? Boy, I don't know. If LG used to make that and didn't anymore, that's kind of strange. I don't know why that would be. Um, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, Samsung makes a good product, too. Uh, so, you know, that one should should work fine. Um, let's see. Mike B says uh, that he saw Solo in a uh, brand new theater in Boston. <clears throat> with the Dolby Atmos and laser projection. Now, was it a Dolby Cinema, specifically called a Dolby Cinema? Because uh, that's the only way you're going to see high dynamic range. Not that it would make any difference with this movie. I thought perhaps there was something wrong with the presentation I saw, but since I posted my review and I've been getting comments about it, a lot of people have said the same thing, that, that it looked uh, very dim, very murky, uh, not very deep blacks. Uh, the highlights were higher, certainly, so it was high dynamic range. And the Dolby sizzle reel at the beginning before the movie started, that looked normal. So it wasn't a problem with the presentation. It was actually what the director and the cinematographer wanted. Um, but uh, anyway, so unless it was an, uh, well, it doesn't really matter if it was a Dolby cinema because it wouldn't look that different than a regular theater. But uh, certainly they used Atmos to good effect. In the theater I saw it in, as I said, the, the audio was extremely harsh. Um, so that was another unfortunate aspect about it. Ha <laughs> lumpy. Watching Solo was like watching it on an old CRT. Blacks and grays were terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. That's what I thought too. It was a Dolby Cinema. Cinema Dolby symbol right at the entrance, Mike B. Well, there you go. It, then, you know, uh, I'm glad you had a good experience. I really am. Uh, just about 28 seconds left. 
Uh, Edmund Euler guy asks, is there any talk about another manufacturer getting into OLED? No, not that I know of. Uh, LG Display is the company that makes the panels for LG Electronics, which is the company that makes the TVs, and also Sony and Panasonic, which are only in Europe. Stick around for the top. You bet. All right. Thank you. Get your motor running. Leo Laporte, V Tech Guy. My motor is running. 8888. Ask Leo. Back to the phones we go. Tim in San Diego, Leo Laporte, V Tech Guy. Hi, Tim. Hey, Leo. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. What hey, can I do I for a, you? I got a question. I bought a new Netgear router from Costco, the. Uh, R7900, if that makes any difference. Okay. Anyway, it was a great router, worked great when it worked, but I had to reboot it like every two days. And uh, ended up going online, and that was everyone's consensus. So oh, I returned it. Wonderful. Yeah, and there was not much support there. I really have, was, I, I liked Netgear before, now I, I just won't own another product from them. It, uh, it was horrible. But uh, so my, rec my question is, uh, what do you recommend? Yeah, I like Netgears too, and it's too bad. Uh, my favorite, uh, well, so the answer varies depending on what you're trying to do. A uh, standalone router comparable to the Netgear would be the Asus. Uh, and the, one of the reasons I like them is because they are DDWRT compatible. In fact, they've written their software based on DDWRT, which is an open source router software that's very, very good. And uh, so there are third party firmware uh, you can put on the. Um, router which is nice i like the hardware um, but i think one of the problems you're seeing is that routers are becoming commoditized and uh the quality has really fallen the other problem is uh you want to make sure you're getting a router that's going to be kept up to date those the net gears unfortunately are on the list not that particular one but some net gears are on the list uh, the fbi put out of routers that are susceptible to this vpn filter virus it was uh, disseminated by the russians uh, half a million routers infected. Netgear, TP-Link, Linksys, uh, and Microtik, all four of them I would just take off my list because what that means is they're not keeping them up to date, that they have flaws and they're not being patched. You right. want a router, I think nowadays, very important if you're buying anything that goes on the Internet, but routers especially, because they are vectors for attack, that you get one that is made by a company that has a commitment to not only keeping it up to date, but has the capability of pushing those firmware updates to you. You want a router that is firmware updated automatically and regularly because that way you at least have some hope <laughs> of keeping it secure. I also right. find that, uh, you know, the, now how much did you spend for this 7900? It was uh, $180. So that's the other thing that's changed. You know, it used to be people did not want to spend more than 100 bucks for a router because you get a right. Linksys for 40 uh, Good news, in a way, <laughs> the routers are getting more expensive. That means people, are, I guess, are more willing to spend money because, in my opinion, you need to. A cheap router is, is definitely out of the picture. I would look at, now, the mesh routers, the, uh, you know, Eero is a sponsor, but there are other mesh routers as well from, uh, I like, actually, Netgear's Orbi is quite good, uh, but also uh, Velop from Linksys. Uh, my favorites are Eero and Plume, which are kind of third-party, not traditionally well-known router companies. Eero is a good example, though. They've pledged. They say we're not vulnerable, vulnerable to VPN filter, and we've pledged to keep it up to date, and we push out updates. I get out regular updates on the Eero. I think that's a really good thing. Now, the Eero is really designed for a situation where more than you need more than one router, where you have a router and extenders. How big is this? You is the space you're going to? light up well i they i'm trying to cover a half acre actually oh but, then uh, then you might want an eero be great yeah. <laughs> uh you know t typical router might be good for about 1500 square feet maybe 2000 if you pushed it so if your home is right. bigger than that you probably do want a mesh system that has multiple units the uh, i would without hesitation recommend the eero for this if you want a single standalone router, I think Synology is a very good choice. They have very uh, sophisticated routers. They also are keeping them up to date and have an automatic update feature. Okay. Um, and the Asus is, uh, I, I'm not sure if the newer ones are auto-updated. They do keep them up to date, and because they're based on firmware that 
is uh, open source. They will be much more secure over the long run and even supported after Asus stops supporting them. But I don't think I don't know if they have the auto update feature yet. So okay. and then uh, what about outdoor speakers? Are you still uh, recommending Sonos or Sonos does not have outdoor speakers. Oh. Um. Uh, so, no, <laughs> I do not recommend Sonos. Um, that's a good question. I'm not up to, on outdoor speakers. You know, every time we would go to CES, there'd be a whole bunch of speakers that looked like rocks. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's been designed for outdoors and so forth. I don't know uh, what... I'll have, to, I'll have to defer to the chat room on, on what are good outdoor speakers, because I don't know. Maybe Scott Wilkinson, he's still hanging around. Scott, are you up on uh, outdoor speakers by any chance? <laughs> Not particularly. Yeah. I'm just looking them up, actually, as okay. we're talking. Well, if you come up with something, let, let me know. I will. Give me a holler. I don't, off the top of my head, uh, know of any particularly that I would recommend. Typically, the, you know, the reason they're outdoors is they're weather sealed. And typically, they're not the greatest right. speakers. You know, you're not <laughs> you're not going to get clips horns, uh, outdoor version of clips horns. So, but that may not matter because when you want a speaker outdoors, really, it's just kind of ambient. Right, right. Yeah, I'm not looking to super great quality. Right, and and, and it, just because it's outdoor doesn't mean it's actually going to get rained on. It could be under the deck or you know something like that. So. The Sonos, if you could keep them from getting damp, right, that would be fine. I think there are people who use them uh, outdoors as long as they're sheltered. But uh, let's see. T Tom's guy just did a review of outdoor speakers. Uh, I'm just looking at some of their... You might want to look at this one. One does, in fact, is shaped like a rock. Uh, <laughs> uh, best outdoor speakers 2018, tomsguide.com. That'd be one to look at. I will, I will look at that. Yeah, it looks just, hey, like, could, just like a rock. <laughs> if I could do one more follow-up question. Yeah. My my daughter has a, a a small podcast that she has, and she's got a little uh, like a sound effect board that she's using. And the quality of her podcast, I think, is exceptional. But Great. This, uh, this little board that she's using is kind of degrades her her production value in my eyes. So I was looking for something. Do you have a, a recommendation for? Oh, I do. <laughs> Don't get me started on my soundboard. I uh, I have. Quite, I have I I pledged not to use it on the show, but there's a company called Elgato that I highly recommend. Actually, if she does streaming uh, video, this really they, they it's called the Stream Deck, and they made it for for people doing Twitch and other streaming gaming videos because it's the it does do sounds, but it also right. does uh, controls OBS and other streaming software. So if she's like streaming her gaming that kind of thing, it'd be great for that as well. Uh, it's very fast. You can assign any sound to any button. Uh, you just push the button and it plays the sound. The quality's as good as the sound will be, but you do need a computer hooked up to your mixer to do this. Now, if okay, she yes. has an iPad, she, there are also a number of software-based uh, soundboards for the iPad that are great. Um, so it just depends. This isn't too expensive, though. This was, I think, 60 bucks or something like that. Yeah, and it, and it really works great. It's got uh, light-up LED keys so you can see what the sound is. And then, uh, as you as you can see, it's very tempting to press it. <laughs> this is the this is the, 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 the your DJ's worst nightmare. What's the name of your daughter's podcast? It is called Kim Knows Nothing. Oh, good name. <laughs> and, and is it audio or is it video too? Or no, it's just, it's just audio. Awesome. It's just audio. She does. It's a it's a a murder podcast where she goes back and kind of. Put some humor into it. It, uh, it. it sounds awkward, but it it, it works. It's really oh, I, I love this. I'm looking at it right now. Kim knows nothing. dot com, and uh, this is awesome. So, how old is your your daughter's an adult? Yeah, she's yeah, not yeah. a twelve year old. This is pretty nice. No, she's not twelve. This yeah, is yeah. great. This is kind of ba you know like Serial, where uh, which was the most successful podcast of all time, which is based on an unsolved or a murder that might have been solved incorrectly. This is great. I love it. Murder, the latest murder in a Disney town. <laughs> and she puts in like horror sound effects. No, kind of a blooper stuff. Um, it you, you have to listen to it. it I, I really can't explain how. how I'm going to listen to it. Murder. I'm going to listen to it. Yeah. And if you want to give her a nice little gift, she does have to hook it up Windows or Mac. It's called the Stream Deck from Elgato. Awesome. And Klipsch, Thank you so much, Leo. The chat room tells me Klipsch does make outdoor speakers. Thank you, loquacious one. The Klipsch AW650 indoor-outdoor speaker. So there you go. 
Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Let's take a break. More of your calls right after this. <laughs> uh, too, too many, too many buttons. Too many, too many, too many. It's, I love that. It's dangerous. That. I've got them all, all on here. It's just. What was what was the name of that uh, that guy's daughter's? Uh, oh, it looks really good. Kim knows nothing. Kim, .com. Kim knows Kim nothing. Knows nothing. <laughs> I love the name, and it's a great subject. What a great subject. <clears throat> By the way, yes, Loquacious uh, forwarded uh, you the uh, the thing that I found uh, called the Klipsch AW650. Oh, okay. Okay, good. So. And I guess there are companies that make Sonos-compatible speakers, like the Sonance. Mm. So Sonance, yes. Yeah, so there you go. Exactly right. There you go. And and uh, Speakercraft used to make box speakers and, and all sorts of outdoor speakers. I don't know if they still do, to tell you the truth. I'm not even sure they're still around, but let me just double-check here. Um <clears throat> Speaker craft. They were the one of the big outdoor speaker makers. And for some reason, things aren't working very well over at the Wilkinson house. It's getting bogged down for some reason. Oh, well. Um, anyway, hey, everybody. Uh, now that I have your attention... Uh, let's see. Will 21 in convert. Win 21 in convert. Uh, is plasma still a thing in TV? Absolutely not. It is dead, dead, dead. No one's making it. No one's going to make it. It's dead. Uh, if you still have a Panasonic uh, plasma, one of their la last models, they're fantastic. Only 1080p. Not high dynamic range. So the, you know, it's older technology that cannot be brought up to current standards. But for what it is, phenomenal. It's just great. Uh, I'm not sure why they never, I guess it was kind of too expensive to make a 4K plasma. Part of the problem is plasma TVs, the subpixels, the individual red, green, and blue little subpixels, each of which one of each makes up a, a full pixel. They're little tiny cavities. They're actual physical little spaces uh, filled with uh, with a gas, with an inert gas that becomes a plasma. Uh, electrons are stripped away uh, when when they're electrified. And I guess I'm I'm supposing here. It's just supposition on my part that it was very difficult to make a panel with those tiny little uh, spaces uh, small enough to make 4K. I, I don't think that was going to be very practical. So <clears throat> that may be one reason, probably is one reason at least, why plasma went away. But it's gone. Um, let's see. Hey, Robert Bigelow, good to see you. Compter. Uh, oh, Compter says speaker speakercraft is still in business being sold at Best Buy. Okay, there you go. They certainly used to be big in outdoor speakers. Uh, so maybe they still are. That would be another good way to go. But the Klipsch ones are probably, you know, excellent. Really excellent. I love Klipsch speakers. Uh, Edmonton Euler guy says my 60-inch 10-year-old LG Plasma beats most 4K LCDs when showing hockey and other sports. Yes, certainly... Uh, motion handling and motion sharpness on plasma was much better than LCD or even OLED uh, because of the way that they worked. And as a result, fast action sports, hockey and what have you, Edmonton Oiler guys, obviously into that, uh, that, that looks a lot sharper than it does on LCD. No question about it. So, <clears throat> Lawn Dog says, I'm puzzled why smart TVs are so limited in updating their apps that run on the smart TV. Why is this? I honestly don't know. Um, it's it's a mystery to me. I'm going to have to look into it because the, the caller before my segment, uh, you know, talking about the Vizio, uh, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm not sure why that is, that he could only see 1080p and not high dynamic range from Netflix when he has the right subscription. He's got a TV that I, in fact, reviewed <laughs> and and used that function. So I don't know. 
Couldn't tell you. Um, Dreamscapes. Can you can I make recommendations for putting speakers inside a cabinet? I have 18 inches behind the speaker and three inches on the side and six inches on the top. I never recommend putting speakers in a cabinet if you want the best possible sound. And the reason is when you put a speaker in a cabinet, even one with some space around it, a little bit of space, the sound bounces around in there quite a bit and muddies up the sound that you end up hearing. So, you know, for critical listening situations, it's never a good idea. Uh, now, you know, for non-critical background music, stuff like that, sure, fine, whatever, doesn't matter. But um, uh, for critical listening, it's never a good idea. If you're going to do it, and here's the way to round, <laughs> here's the workaround. If you're going to do it, uh, put it in the cabinet, but then pack uh, damping material around it. Now, that may not look very nice. You may have to do some... I don't know, facing around it or something. But if you can put damping material, which would be, uh, I don't want to say fiberglass because that wouldn't be really good, uh, but some sort of damping material, even a blanket, I guess, I would try to get, uh, I think it's called mineral wool. That's another po possible material. But if you can damp the sounds, I don't mean dampen, I mean damp as in bring down, um, you know, inhibit uh, the sounds from bouncing around inside that cabinet, then that will help a great deal. That's that's certainly one way to, to help that problem. <clears throat> uh, OK, let's see here. Hey, Lumpy, uh, Costco closing out 55 inch T TLC, no TCL, TCL Roku TV for 379. Ooh, very nice. Um is there a way to keep remotes locked to each TV? I don't think so. I've thought of that myself and and run into that problem. And actually, it actually turned out to be a good thing once when one of my remotes didn't work, and I brought a remote from another TV, another TV of the same manufacturer into that room, and it worked fine. So that was a blessing in my case, but it's kind of a curse in your case, maybe. Uh, I would say I, I don't know of any way to do that. Uh, if you want a two for one, I see what you do. You want to purchase two for one room. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem because the one remote's going to activate both TVs. Unless they are, for example, diametrically opposed, that is, facing each other. Uh, but the the IR beam from a remote is pretty wide, and it's intended that way so that you don't have to be real careful about where you aim the remote. You can aim it sort of more or less in that general direction, and it'll – It'll work. But that also means if there's another similar, same TV in the same room, the, the remote will work that one as well. Um, some sort of light barrier. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a tough question, depending on how they're configured in the room. Are they right next to each other? Are they on opposite sides of the room? If they're on opposite sides of the room, it's probably going to work okay. Remote PC. Okay, so, Scott. Have a great that's week. It. We'll Thanks. talk to you next week. See you next week. Thank you, my friend. You bet. Bye-bye. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography. We're talking smartphones. We're talking smartwatches. We're talking augmented reality and all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number if you want to call in, question, a comment. Maybe you've got a suggestion for outdoor speakers or I guess there's a brand called Sonance that makes Sonos compatible outdoor speakers. So there's a solution. For our last caller uh, in the last hour. But now it's a new hour. New calls, new questions at 888-827-5536. Kicking it off, line two, Vancouver, British Columbia. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Leo. How are you doing today? I am well. How are you? Good, good, good. We are very happy to chat with you, and uh, we very much appreciate your and Andy's advice. And uh, I've got a little... I need to ask for a little more today. All righty. Andy... Walker or Andy Anako? I know two Andys. Um, and we also watch Mac Break as well. So. Yeah, Andy Anako's on Mac Break, but Andy Walker was my co-host for many years uh, on Tech TV Canada. I don't know if you ever oh, watched really? Call for Help. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Anyway, so, what okay. can I do for you? I'm, I'm more or less an Apple guy. I follow a lot of your advice. Yep. Um, 
I have an older time capsule I'm looking to replace, and I'm, the front runner is with an Eero, supporting one of your sponsors. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. the, the problem with that is 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 two part is backups. I follow your three two one strategy, and I have on the back of the Eero. There's only two Ethernet ports, and I currently use about four of them. Yeah. So. I'm not sure how to proceed with that. I, you know what? I well, think. it's really a question of: Do you want a router that acts as a switch as well, or would you like uh, separate routers and switch? Because you can, in fact, there are <laughs> there are other mesh routers. I also use a mesh router called Plume, that, right? That doesn't have any second port. It's just <laughs> it's just got an any no outie. Wow. So that would be that would be a bad choice. The Eero has that second port, so that you could attach a switch to it. No, uh, which, which are, you know, I, I've heard you talk about the Ubiquiti Edge X router. You don't want that. That's a router. You just want to, you don't need much. and uh, You don't need a managed switch. You just need a base. I, we used to call them hubs. Right. Uh, but I, I guess now you want a switch which has a little more brains in it. And you can have four, eight. I have, uh, I think I have a 24 port switch coming off of my era. <laughs> Well, how about one that's fairly easy to use? And you know, They're all easy to use because you don't have to do anything. That's why you don't want an edge router or something with too much sophistication. A switch, exactly. you just plug in. You, you, know, take the, you plug in your, uh, your router to the outside world, whether a cable modem or a DSL modem, whatever. You plug that in. And then you take the other port, if it's an Eero, uh, and you plug that into the switch. And now you have as many ports as you want. Four, six, 18, 24. Right um, now, can you do you feel like recommending one? A simple one. I I don't need more than about four or five. I would just. I mean, it doesn't matter. Honestly, uh, <laughs> I think I have net gears, but I, I don't think it really makes that much difference because they're not doing much. Okay. You know, so like, uh, uh, it's basically. I think of it as a splitter almost, with a right. little bit of a little bit of sophistication that makes it a switch as opposed to a hub. Okay, and then what would you toss in for, for backup, uh, a NAS or something like that? Yeah, I mean, that's how, so you just kind of described my setup. I've got a cable modem plugged into an Eero, the Eero plugged into a switch. This One of the ports on the switch, it is, as I say, a 24-port switch because it's also my home theater switch. So the TV, the TiVo, the, the everything's, you know, the Roku, they're all plugged into that switch. But one of the ports on the switch goes out to a, uh, a network-attached storage device, a Synology, as it happens. And and that's um, that has my backups on it. But the, yeah. you mentioned the 321 backup. This is, of course, uh, I and I give all credit. Uh, to Peter Krogh, who came up with this. He's a photographer, and, you know, photographers, uh, especially wedding photographers, are a group of people who cannot afford to lose one bit of data. You lose wedding pictures, you're yeah. really, you're, your you name is trouble. mud. Well, you may never work in this town again. So uh, he had came up with this 321. It's actually part of an entire website that he created with the Library of Congress. I'm a big fan of it. Um, it's DP Best Flow dot i want to say org yeah dp best flow dp for digital photography best flow for best workflow.org and if you look in the menu uh under uh, best practices you'll see a backup section and that's where he describes his three two one backup and i'll, I'll give you the you know because you've heard me talk about it yeah i already do it uh to the nth degree i'm sure ad nauseum but i'll but i'll describe it for those who haven't heard it the simplest way to remember the three, two, one rule is three copies. This is, you know, this comes up a lot. I think a lot of people get a NAS, a backup drive or something, back their stuff up to it and delete the originals. The other day I was talking to somebody who says, yeah, I want something to back up my photos so I can take them off my phone. And I said, well, then it's not a backup yeah. because it's the only copy, right? That's the original now. If you take it off your phone, you backed it up to a drive. But because it says it's a backup because you said you were backing up, people say, oh, now I'm backed up. No, that's not. You need three copies, two at least, yeah. but three would be better. Your original and then copies to two different, and you want two different forms of media. That's the two and in, in one, a hard yeah. drive and a DVD or a hard drive and you know, it's just for for that's a kind of belt and suspenders thing. You don't want to be dependent on any one technology. And yeah. then the one in three, two, one is offsite. And so offsite can be one of those two. Uh, so backing it up to a network attached storage, that's a hard drive in your house. And then making sure that's backed up to the cloud. Or you can do your own, roll your own offsite by by I used to switch network attached storage. At the end of every week I'd I'd had duplicate ones. I'd bring one to work. 
where I just would sit like a doorstop, and then I'd connect the uh, one from work. I'd reconnect it, and it would do the backups. And that way, I'd never be more than a week out of date. Yeah, so, I've got a I've got a bootable, uh, a super duper bootable backup that I good man the deposit box about a, a perfect block away. So so that's perfect. So you have a direct image of the hard drive, and then would periodically refresh it. That's the only trick, it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but I just wasn't I wasn't sure about the the switch for the Ethernet ports on the back and what you'd recommend. I, I guess I'm going to be looking at a. Uh, which now? Well, you can get. I mean, you can get routers that have four or even eight additional ports on them. But really, all that is is a router plus a switch. Yeah. So no, I'd like to. I'd like to get the Eero with a switch. I think and you'll like the Eero. After this uh, VPN. Now again, Eero is a sponsor of our shows. But after this VPN filter thing, uh, this really convinced me that the right way to go is with a router that's made by somebody that's committed to keeping it up to date and actually updates it for you automatically. And that's, yeah, it, absolutely. That's the Eero is a very good example of why you want something like that. So, um, you get the Eero and then get a switch. They're cheap, uh, you know, $50 for a, for a eight port switch, probably net gears. Fine. They're made out of metal. I like that. <laughs> you know, I'm a big deal. Uh, right. and then you'll plug the uh, Eero into that and then plug anything else you need hardwired into the switch. Uh, if and you've already got a NAS, right? So uh, or not? You're thinking of buying no, a NAS? No, I'm going to get a NAS. I'm looking at the, the 218 plus. I think I I just can't remember who makes it right now, but that, yeah. that's a fairly good investment. Actually, that's going to be what about five or seven hundred bucks? It's a significant years, so. investment. It is, uh, and yeah. so I don't tell everybody they need one. It really is for somebody who wants more control. So yeah. with, for instance, a Synology, I don't need to use third-party, you know, like an Evernote, a third-party note service, because I've got, it's got one built in. I could use, it's got actually basically all the Office components. I can run a web server on it. Mm -hmm. I can use it to back up photos. And it has features you could back up to a third-party uh, cloud storage si a system like our sponsor, Carbonite. Or uh, yeah. Synology does something really cool. You can buy dupl two two duplicate synologies keep one at work one at home and they'll synchronize themselves automatically so you have an off-site but all of that's going to cost more than you know using a service even yeah. over time I and mean, it's an expensive solution it's just that you get more control and i this is how i do it and i think i think most geeks this is kind of the way they'd prefer because you want the control over over what's going on nas stands for network attached storage it's just a big hard drive it's actually a computer with a lot of storage but no keyboard, mouse, or monitor. You, you you attach it to the network and control it by the network. Hey, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. I like uh, I like getting geeks all set up. You know, <laughs> oh, of course, uh, it's not a not a cheap process. Eighty eight eighty eight. Ask Leo. That's the phone number. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Got my second HomePod. We're going to try this pair stereo pairing. Apple just updated iOS. We'll talk about that when we come back. Leo Laporte. The Tech Guy Podcast brought to you today and as always by those nice folks at Rocket Mortgage. Big fan of Rocket Mortgage. Next time we buy a house, actually when we refi, that might be the next time we'll use Rocket Mortgage. It's not like the old days. Four years ago when we bought our house and we went to the bank. Oh, God. You know, you has to, it used to be you'd, you'd have to get dressed up Go to the bank, say, please, I'd like to buy some a home. Can you please give me some money? And they'd say, okay. But here, fill out this 30-page application first. Then, and then it's trips to the attic or the basement to go through paperwork, find pay stubs and bank statements. Actually, in my case, I didn't save any of that stuff. I had a call. It took a long time. Then this, four years ago, was a real nightmare because we did all that. Then the bank came back again and again, asked for more information. We went on vacation. We were faxing stuff. Faxing. There you go. There's a word you don't hear a lot these days. Faxing stuff. We had to call uh, Lisa's sister. Said, could, Debbie, could you, we need to, can you fax them? We almost lost the house. The seller said, what's going on? Now, with Rocket Mortgage, it's a whole different experience. Quicken Loans, number one lender in the country, has put together a simple, fast, completely transparent way to get a home loan that just takes minutes. And it's entirely online which I love. No going to the bank. No. Rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy. Rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy. You go there, answer a few simple questions. They have relationships with all the financial institutions. So when you give permission, they can get all the information they need. You don't have to go to the attic. They'll do that. They crunch the numbers based on your income, your assets, your credit, 
They'll analyze all the home loan options for which you qualify, find the run that's just right for you. You choose the term, the rate, the down payment, and you're approved in minutes. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently with Rocket Mortgage. In most cases, under 10 minutes. That means you could, you could be doing this. You could see a house looking around. Oh, we should buy this house. Okay, well, let's see if we're good for the money. You go to rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy. You fill out the form. Before you leave, you could show the realtor, yeah, we're approved. We'd like to make an offer. That's how you get a house. Rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy. We thank you so much for making the tech guy podcast possible. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 ask Leo, did you get uh, the new iOS? iOS 11.4 came out this week, and uh, did, mostly the features were for people with HomePods. I mean, there were other features, but the big one was for HomePods, AirPlay 2. In fact, I, I only had one of these Apple HomePods. Really don't have a lot of use for it, but my wife recently has discovered a liking for it. This is the uh, the the speaker Apple said, oh, it's the best speaker ever. You know, we put a lot of digital doodads in here to make this little tiny thing. It's about the size of a coffee can sound so much better. It sounds pretty good. Uh, you know, as good as a speaker this size can. There's a limit to the, the physics of it. You can't, you know, you can't get really deep bass on a speaker this small, but it sounds pretty good. Uh, but it had some real limitations, uh, chief of which... It, it's still there. It really is for Apple's music system and nothing else. If you if you want to use Siri, which is built into it, uh, you can only play Apple Music. You can, with your iPhone, use AirPlay to put other music into it from your iPhone, but that's kind of a pain in the butt. So it was very. It's a very limited. It's really a product aimed at the Apple marketplace, but it's getting a little better. Apple had promised when they introduced it a year ago, when they told people about it a year ago, that it would have some extra capabilities like the ability to put multiple, kind of like Sonos, put multiple HomePods in in your house and have them all play the same thing in a kind of a party mode. Didn't come out that way, though, when they came out. And, and then also the theory was you could take two of them in a room and stereo pair them and make a left-right speaker. Apple always said, oh, you don't need to do that. It's stereo. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> It's stereo. It's 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 not that it's mono. It does have you know left and right because it has speakers all around it, but they're not separated very well. So it doesn't sound like stereo. It sounds like you know a single speaker playing stereo music. I guess it's not quite mono, but it's not quite stereo. Anyway, now it is because if you want to spend another four hundred bucks and get a second one, I do not recommend it. <laughs> I really don't. There are better ways to do this. And they're, frankly, speakers that sound as good or even better. But if you're all in the Apple ecosystem, you know, the HomePod's not a bad idea. If you've really, if Apple Music and everything, my wife loves it because she can just ask Siri. We have Apple Music and it plays what she wants. And so we got a second one. We can, you know, I, I need to review the pairing and all that stuff. So I'll make a stereo pair. I'll let you know. It just came today. Also, uh, so that's iOS or AirPlay 2, which is part of iOS 11.4. The other thing that uh, people have been waiting for for a year and turned out to be, I guess, harder to do than Apple thought is messages in iCloud. Now, this is something that other message systems do. If you use Google Hangouts or WhatsApp, your messages to any one device will appear on all devices, right? But that never was the case with Apple's messages. If you have messages on your phone and messages on your computer or your iPad, they're different sets of messages. They don't unify. Now they do because your messages will be stored in the cloud. If you turn that on, and it's not on by default, which tells me that Apple's not completely confident about the feature. But if you turn it on, then you can uh, store your messages up in the cloud. And then there are a few other things, but that's those, <laughs> those are the big... Those are the big, uh, the big things. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. Back to the phones. Line four. It's Dan in Fresno, California. Hello, Dan. Hey, Leo. How's it going? I'm well. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Um, I have a question. I have a uh, about four Amazon Echo Dots in my mom's house. Um, I just signed up for both the Spotify Premium trial and the Amazon Music trial. 
Um, she kind of likes the Spotify better. Okay. And so what we were wondering is, is there a way to set up the Echo so that the default music service it uses is Spotify? Yeah. I think. Now, <laughs> you said it's an, you, these are Echoes or Google Homes? They're Dots. They're Echo Dots. Echo Dots. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you just go in the, uh, I'm pretty sure, let me just make sure, because uh, you, you have to go into the settings in the Amazon Echo app, except that they call it the other thing, the A-word app, and you have right. to, you, yeah, and you have to uh, choose, in, let me just look and make sure, you kind of threw me a curve, I just, I always thought you could, have you tried this in settings? I, I looked in there, and I really didn't see where to set it. Yeah, I mean, they obviously, they would prefer... To yeah, have you use and pay for Amazon's music, but most people use Spotify, and the good news is almost everything supports Spotify. So yeah, you so it's a, I'll tell you why it's hard to find. They bury it. You go to settings, and the first thing you see in settings is a list of all those dots. You have to go and and set up new device. You have to go beyond that. You have to scroll down a little farther. And then, in my case, a lot farther because I have a lot of Amazon Echo devices. And then you'll see under uh, Preferences, Music and Media. And then you, you will sign up for the music services you want it to use. I have Amazon Music, but I also have Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio. Choose Default Music Service. It turns out you can only choose from Spotify or Amazon Music. They don't give you the chance to use Google Music, I guess. But, but Spotify's there, so uh, okay. add Spotify. Press done, and then from now on, when you ask for music without specifying the service, it will choose Spotify. You can still specify the service. You could say on Amazon Music if you wish. Right. Yep. Most people, be, you know, uh, there's Amazon Music Unlimited, which is effectively similar to Spotify. Um, and then there's Amazon Prime Music, which only has a million songs. So most people... You know, I, I think Spotify is actually the best of the bunch. They're certainly the most popular. They have 90 million paid subscribers. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm visually impaired, so I, I, I kind of like the Spotify UI on the, the app. Interesting. It's much easier better. for you to use. Yeah. Much better, yeah. I like the playlist uh, feature. I like the ability to share playlists, to subscribe to other people's playlists. Um, they have all roughly the same amount of music, but... Uh, I just, I like Spotify a lot, I, I, and I like its app a lot. I'm glad to hear you like it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Neil. You should be able to do it. It's just a little, you know, it's buried, because, app. I mean, uh, Amazon, eh, well, they'd probably like it if you used Amazon Music, maybe paid them for it instead of Spotify. But it does work in there. You know, I notice I don't have my Google Play Music or Apple Music set up. I bet you I could choose those as default services, too, if they were in there. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number, 888-827-5536. When we talk about stuff like this, you don't have to feel like you have to write it down or yell at the radio if you disagree or have a better solution uh, or even call if you have a better solution. You can just go to the website, techguylabs.com. Everything is written there. As it is said, so it shall be written by our great James DeRuvo. You can leave your comments and suggestions and corrections there. We even put audio and video from previous shows. Tech, it's all free. No sign up. TechGuyLabs.com. Oh, this might be a problem on this keyboard. Oh, maybe it's the symbol. No. Keyboard is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Maybe I have to change. I love this little uh, this Gemini. We'll see. It's, it's got to be, if it's, uh, it was 600 bucks, so it's not cheap, but it's cheaper than a smartphone, and it has, it takes a SIM. And it takes a uh, SD card. It's a nice screen. Type-C charging. But I'm trying to type at. And shift doesn't work. And control doesn't work. And function doesn't work. Maybe function shift? No. It should really do it. Shift should do it. And it's giving me a quote which is over here. So there's something, the keyboard, you know, it's German. It might be that the keyboard is still mapped to some oddball keyboard. So maybe I can, maybe I can fix that in um, languages and input. Let's see. Languages, English, virtual keyboard, Google keyboard, English, Gemini keyboard, US, except for US. That would be a fairly 
fairly big problem. Uh, Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask Leo the phone number. Line three, Dana in Rancho Santa Margarita, California. Hello, Dana. Hi, Leo. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. My question is uh, I have an iMac uh, 2012, and I took it to the Genius Bar, and they, it's been running slow, has a hard drive, not a, not a, a flash drive. And and they suggested I erase everything and reinstall everything, which sounded quite significant. And uh, I, I'm, I'm I'm wondering to try to improve it. Its performance is that is that the best test? They ran tests and said nothing appeared wrong with the hard drive, and nothing in their testing showed up as wrong. Yeah. So and, and I have a backup on Time Machine and Super Duper. Um, that's actually the first thing I do is uh, you've got super duper, which means you've got, I presume, a full bootable image of the original disc, right? Correct. Yeah, and it's kept up to date. I would wipe the disc and blast super duper. That, that's a quick and easy fix. I'll tell you why I think they're right. <laughs> Uh, and by the way, they're not always right at the Apple Store, even though they're geniuses. Sometimes my experience has been they're wrong. But in this case, I think they probably got it right. The first thing to go on any computer is the moving parts. On any device, it's the moving parts. The only moving part in that computer and most computers is the hard drive. Okay. And uh, one of the symptoms of a hard drive that's getting flaky is it gets sluggish. And the reason is if the operating system can't immediately read a sector it'll try again and it may try a couple of times and then it reads it and keeps going so everything's okay nothing's failing it's just slow because it's having to reread sectors multiple times just to get the data off of it and that's the kind of symptom it happens to all computers where it doesn't look like there's anything wrong it may not nothing may even show up in tests as being wrong I don't know what Apple's diagnostics check, but they may not notice that kind of thing because the drive is ultimately fine. It, it, it can be read. It's just slow. And the reason replacing the data sometimes works is sometimes it's a, a problem with the drive. You know, maybe maybe it's, it's getting old and flaky, but more often it's just that the data that's written on the drive is getting harder to read for a variety of reasons. So rewriting the data, you know, they're just magnetic signals, refreshes those magnetic signals, and often is all you need to do. So, so there, the, 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 the fellow's thinking was that that maybe it's a bad hard drive and slowing down, but there may be something in the software that's that's corrupted. That's no. It. He well, th okay. I don't know what the fellow's thinking is. <laughs> okay. But the initial thought is what I just said, which is you don't need to change anything. That super duper backup, just put it back on there. Now, if that doesn't fix it, then it's not, you know, hard to read sectors in most likely, most likelihood. You know, uh, my friend Steve Gibson makes a program uh, called SpinWrite. It doesn't work on Mac, so I'm not telling you to get it. But what it does is it goes through and finds hard to read sectors and just maps them off, says don't use this one anymore, and moves the data off of it. And that, oh. that refreshes a drive beautifully. Uh, you can't do that on a Mac, really, but uh, you can you know, format the drive and start over. And often that's sufficient. So, but if it's not, then it is possible you, you know, and this is, I think what you're digging at. Maybe you've installed something that's slowing it down. If that's the case, restoring the super duper image is going to put it exactly back to the way it is, which means it'll still be slow. Well, that's what I, I was thinking. And that's why he said erase it all and just start fresh. And yeah. So he's giving you uh, one step that does both things. Because that will also, if you start fresh, and that's a more draconian thing, right? Because you have to reinstall all your apps, move your data off and back on again. Um, you know, you at least have a good backup, and that's that's the good news. One thing to check, one way to do this, is to boot to the Super Duper drive. If you make a bootable backup with Super Duper, you can boot to it as if it's the internal drive. Now, that drive isn't as fast as your internal drive. It's a USB drive. But if it seems faster... It's the same software. Maybe that internal drive is starting to get sluggish. The best thing you can do, 
and I would do this anyway, and see if he'll do this, is replace it with a solid-state drive. That will yeah. fix all three things. It'll fix the bad drive. It'll fix bad software, because you, you have to reinstall in that case. Well, I guess not. You could still super-duper it back on. And SSDs are literally an order of magnitude faster in reading. So, so, so just so I understand, if I, if I erase this hard drive, then then I, I, I need to reinstall the OS and then put Super Duper on to be able to back it up. I, I backed up for years, but I've never had to restore anything. Yeah, I can't remember <clears throat> what this Super Duper restore uh, process is, but they, they will definitely have a way that you can restore it, maybe by putting a copy of Super Duper on the backup drive. I can't, you'll have to look at the Super Duper site. I can't remember. You're right. I, I've, I use it. I back up every day, and I never paid much attention to what the restore would involve. Yeah, exactly. But it, it'll be on the site. It's 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 got to be simpler than reinstalling Mac OS and installing Super Duper. It's got to be something that you could just run probably from the backup that says restore this backup to there. Okay. But I don't know off the top of my head. I'll, I mean, you can. I'm looking at the site, and I'm sure there'll be something you can find. Well, there is a place to restore, uh, and it just says restore all files. But but I, I thought if I erase the hard drive. Now I don't have Super Duper on the machine to do that. Right. But you do have it on the Super Duper. Yes, I do. Yeah. So you open Super Duper. I guess what you could do, one of the things Super Duper does, and one of the reasons we love it, is it makes a bootable backup. So mm -hmm. when you restart your computer, hold down the Option key and boot to the Super Duper. And now you're running your whole thing off the Super Duper, not on the original drive. Now, by the way, this is when you would wipe the internal drive because you're not running off of it using the disk utilities on the, on the you know, now boot drive, which is your external drive. And then you could run super duper off the now boot drive and say, hey, duplicate this drive to the internal drive. I see. Okay. But if it's a software issue and I copy it back on from super duper, I'm just re reinventing the yeah. same it's, yeah. You know, on a Mac, it's less likely um, software. On a PC, I might grant you that. PCs have all sorts of problems. Over time, they slow down because of just bit rot. But then there's also a lot of a host of kind of adware extensions that can slow things down. They're much less common on the Mac. Uh, you might uninstall anything that you don't know you need. And one place to look is in the launch demons and the startup stuff and see if there's something starting up that you don't know about or don't want. But honestly, uh, the guaranteed fix for this is to get a solid state drive. Right. Right. And in fact, it's more than a fix because it is so much faster than your existing drive. It'll be like you got a new computer. It'll boot up in seconds. It'll, you know, load programs, you know, one bounce or two bounce in the docks instead of five. You suddenly you'll see all sorts of improvements. Just well, I was thinking about just buying a new computer, but listening to you earlier that you're expecting changes coming. Uh, that would. Well, I thought, but the latest rumor is no. Okay. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> uh, we'll just have to wait till Monday. We'll know Monday. Okay. Uh, if they do announce new Macs, it's almost certainly just going to be laptops, not desktops, not iMacs. They just refresh the iMac. But, uh, you know, you never know with Apple. Apple can, th can throw you a curve. But the latest rumor from Mark Gurman of Bloomberg, who is very reliable, and this came out yesterday... And it, it, when, it, when, you, when you see something like this come out so uh, such a short time frame before the event, usually that means that Apple is telling sources to lower expectations because they know people are expecting new hardware. So when you hear a rumor on a Friday before a Monday event, that sounds like, to me, that came from Apple saying, don't get the, tell people not to get their hopes up. There is nothing there. There ain't going to be anything new. It's all software. So I, I have to kind of credit it, especially because it's Mark Gurman. He's very reliable. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So you, that worked. I don't. Uh, I can't understand why they would silk screen the at sign on the keyboard, but you have to press function key K. But I, I, I just I don't get why they would silk screen an at sign on this. See right above the two, at sign. But how do you hit at sign? Function key K. Oh. Doesn't say it anywhere. <laughs> well, I mean, what? Uh, that's just weird.
Uh, no, the reason Lawn Dog Spin Right doesn't work on Macs is because Macs don't have the BIOS uh, call that Steve uses. He uses, what is it, int 13 or int 18, I can't remember, to, to read the disk. And it's, you know, Spin Right's totally dependent on that. And uh, so without int 13, which of course is a PC BIOS call only, um, he can't read the disk. So he has to write, he'll have to duplicate the, the functionality of int 13 on the Mac. Ta da! Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Rick on the line from Phelan, California. Hello, Rick. Hey, how you doing, Leo? I'm great. How are you? I'm out here in the sunshine enjoying the high desert. Oh, how you know, nice. A few years ago about buying a new desktop, and 8.1 um, eight and eight and one was already out, and you strongly suggested if I could still get a 7 I to buy it, and I did. And here we are four years later, still running strong. Good. But I wanted to thank you for that. Yeah, you avoided the pain, the nightmare that was Windows 8. Yes, yes. My wife went through that, but I did not. <laughs> yeah. Nonetheless, the reason why I'm calling is we have a couple of Casio um, Commando, the G-Zone phones. Oh. And my wife gets frustrated with hers. We're kind of old school. We're not real high tech. I know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> what, what frustrates her about the Commando? What she doesn't like is what she can't really see the screen. She wants something that's bigger, that does the, that navigates the Internet a little bit better, uh, probably along the Android-type phone systems. But we don't really know what to get. She wants something bigger that she can take pictures, she yeah. can go online. She wants to she, join the 21st century. Right, but we don't need the latest. Hang on a second. Okay. Holy cow, where are you? I don't know, I got the fire truck going by. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the, the G-Zones are uh, ruggedized. Yes, they are. And that's why I was attracted to them, because, I, you know, I, I work for a living. I'm dropping them. I'm doing this, that, and the other with them all the time. Yeah, it's for somebody who thinks of a smartphone as a phone, primarily. Well, that, that's basically what I need. Yeah. So what she wants is something a couple of years older. We don't need the latest and the greatest. I don't like doing contracts with any of the providers. Um, I'm currently with Verizon and have been for, oh gosh, 14, 15 years. And I really can't complain. Um, but what she's looking for is something that we can go buy on eBay or something like that or Amazon that's a couple of years old but will accommodate what it is she's looking to do. I would recommend, the, 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 in my opinion, these are really the best budget Android phones, are the Motorola's. The Moto, and you probably can still get a G4. The current is G5, but the G4 is about 100 bucks. Yeah, these are G3s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, these are, the, the screens are much better. The cameras are much better. Uh, because she's, you know, I mean, the cameras have made huge leaps and bounds over the last few years. So yeah, yeah, well, a more modern phone will give her a better camera. It just depends on how much she cares about that. Her main interest would be going, at, going able to look stuff up online. You know, like, we, we do a lot of thrifting. We just, we do, we're a big eBay, Craigslist, and Amazon fans. So we're always looking at stuff at thrift stores and yard sales and things like that. And she kind of wants to be able to navigate to look them up. Yeah. You know, and then plus, when we're out on the road, we want to be able to pull up, you know, go get a bite to eat somewhere. And these particular phones just don't do a good job with that. So are you talking about the Motorola Moto or something? You're yeah, now the, the, don't get it from Verizon because they, they, they sell expensive ones. But you can buy these on Amazon. Just when you buy it, make sure that you get one that's Verizon compatible. Verizon. Right, yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah, you understand that. They're different. Yeah. They're a different animal. Yes, they are. Yeah. But I'm sure that you can get a G4 or, you know, or a G5. I really like the G5. That's a little bit more, 200 bucks. Right. But I'm sure you can get one that is uh, that you know that is compatible with uh, with uh, Verizon, and I have to say they're great phones. Yeah, it does work with. Uh, let's see, will not work with CDMA carriers. Carriers, so you want to get the U.S. version of this. Okay, and that's you're gonna have. Yeah, I'm just looking. I see unlocked international versions. That's not what you want. You want the. Uh, I know, I'm aware of that too. Uh, yeah, I, I do understand those will be GSM. That. Right. Yeah, I'm looking. It uh, looks like it's around 200 bucks for the G, for the latest, which is the fifth generation G5 Plus. That's a nice yeah. little phone, and you could probably go look at it at the Verizon store and just walk out the door and get it on Amazon. 
Well, that's that's pretty much been my MO. I usually yeah. have my phones that are, you know, they're a couple year old technology. I've had this commando now for years, and I love it. I mean, it's yeah. it works for me. She but says, "Honey, that. you can stay in 1990, but I would well, like to be in this century." That's pretty much. What <laughs> that's Somebody's crazy. telling me Verizon has uh, the G6, which is the latest, for 240 bucks. Oh, wow. Okay. And that, you know, if you get it from Verizon, there are certain benefits. You know, they'll activate it for you and all that. Right, right. I like the G6 a lot. At that price, man, that's a nice phone. Yeah, so that's the Motorola? Motorola G6. G6. They call it a Moto. Okay. And uh, apparently it's sold, you can get it direct from Verizon. And at 250 bucks, that's in your price range, right? Right, but that puts me in a contract, does it not? Uh, no, not necessarily. I don't know. I don't think that requires a contract. You can ask them. Right, right, If not, right. you can get it unlocked from elsewhere. Now, is there any other options, like along the Samsung line or LG? Or yeah, like sure. That? You can get, uh, you can get older Samsungs. Um, I don't know if Samsungs you're going to get quite as low price. Those Sam, if you can get a Galaxy S6, which is uh -huh. several years old now, that is a great phone. Anything, I wouldn't get anything older than the S6. But right. the Galaxy, let me see what the oldest, see if they have an S7 on uh, Amazon. Yeah, they're still selling that for about 300 bucks refurbished, 250 right. In fact, here's one on the Verizon network, $242, Galaxy S7. Excellent phone. That is a much better camera. That's a, right. that's a stunning camera. Right. It's not so much the camera she's looking for. She's looking for just good quality phone. Great, 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 great. Uh, yeah, I can't guarantee the reception will be great. That just depends on Verizon in your neighborhood. But that's got a great screen, an OLED screen. I think you'd be very happy with that. And it's, and it's a lot bigger, obviously, than my Commando. It is bigger. It's yeah. she will be. Ha it's not huge. Well, actually, she's going to think it's huge. Right. It's huge. It's huge relative to the Commando. I think it's. Right. I think it's five. I want to say five and a half inches. Five point one. Maybe yeah, it's five point one. She She'll love it. Are you kidding? Yeah. And you might even say, wow. It's not rugged, though. Well, <laughs> you don't want to drop this phone. Get her a nice case. I'm good. I'm good with what I got. She's the one that needs the update. I'm yeah. Good. I would look. I think the S7 is is probably just right. That's a couple. They, they skipped S8, so S7 is last year's. Right. Yeah, that's still look for something a couple years old. Yep. Stuff. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. That. Always a always a pleasure spending people's money and helping them join the modern world, if possible. It's always, you know, I think with smartphones, I, I really, I do not discriminate against people who don't want a smartphone. I completely understand that. But at the same time, man, if, if, you, can, if you can spring for it, these are great phones. Uh, line two's next. Let's see. Janice. No, no. This would be Janice. You're next. Gerald's on the line now from San Diego. Hi, Gerald. <clears throat> Hello, Leo. Hello, Gerald. Yeah. I got a little problem. With uh, with Gmail. Okay. Okay. When I try to enter Gmail through uh, Spectrum, which is my uh, cable, cable cable modem, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Gmail comes up, but any time I try to open any one of the mail, everything goes blank. So I took it to a computer store, which has Cox table cable. There it works. Ah, interesting. And I, yeah, and I came back. He says, gee, there's nothing I can do. It's, everything's working. Came back here, and it still doesn't work. So I called Spectrum. Not our there. fault, they say. It's your, yes. It's your browser or something. Well, they're telling me to reinstall the browser. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Hang, hang on the line, because we've got a break for news at the top of the hour. I can help you off the air. I'm not exactly sure. But I kind of have some ideas. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hour three coming up right after this. So Gmail is really an application. It's a heavy web application. So there's a lot of JavaScript going on. And um, what, for whatever reason, you can see, so you can see when you go to Gmail, you can see, Gerald, you can see the like all the inbox and everything shows up. Right. But but then you click an email link, and do you get anything at all or just a completely blank screen? Completely blank. Yeah, isn't that? Got a click. And you're not doing anything, I'm pretty sure you're not doing anything like running a VPN or doing any weird stuff to your network connection. You have a standard 
cable modem and all that. That is correct. Yeah. From Are you running any like ad blocking software or uh, any any extensions? Uh, well, the, the one that you suggested, which ah. was uh, you block origin, you uh, block origin. Or yeah, that's a nice that's a nice ad blocker. This is clear. This is clearly something that your cable company is doing, but they're not. You know, it. it does, they're not doing it to everybody, or it wouldn't, or they wouldn't be able to do it, <laughs> right? If, if if Gmail didn't work on Spectrum, they'd have a problem. So it does, but it's an interaction, maybe between. I would try disabling the ad blocker for Gmail. See if that fixes it. You know, uh -huh. how, you know how to. You, you can disable it if you look in your uh, little extensions tabs, and just. Uh, when you're in Gmail, just click the on-off switch at the top there, and that'll say, from now on, don't don't block Gmail. The, uh, the, yeah, other, I, the other thing you can uh, try doing, you're doing it in Chrome, obviously, right? That's correct. Yeah, now one yeah. would think that Gmail would work best in Chrome, but it is not. <laughs> I've had this problem with Twitter for some reason in Chrome, and I think that Chrome sometimes chokes for, I'm not sure why, maybe there's not enough RAM or, or I don't know what. Um so a couple of things I would try. First of all, try using, are you on Windows 10? Yes, I, I, I did. I, 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 it, works on, it works on Edge. It does work on Edge, yeah. That's what I do when my Twitter blanks out. It goes black, not white, but it goes black. I open it in Edge, it's fine. And it's some sort of weird interaction. One thing you can try, Chrome was just updated. So if you, do, if you go to the About Chrome settings... Okay. Uh, You'll, you'll see in About Chrome, it'll say updating, if you have an updated. Version 67 is the current one. So that would certainly be something to try first. That's the You should do that anyway. Well, yeah, I do have 67 on there. Oh, nice. You're, you're up to date. Um, well, I would try disabling just temporarily anyway. You block Origin, make sure that's not blocking it. Um, I can get anything else except Gmail. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, just. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's. Uh, it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's not good. I don't want to say oh, use Edge all the time. Yeah. Well, um, the. the uh... I would. I would. One thing you might try also. It's weird that it worked when you were off site with somebody else's connection. That's interesting. That's why I think it's some sort of interaction between, you know, a lot of Internet service providers, especially cable companies, are running all sorts of weird little things to intercept traffic and stick ads in and so forth. And that's why even though uBlock Origin works fine with Gmail, it might be blocking something that Spectrum is doing that then it has the impact of not loading the page. Yeah, but when I disconnected the the uh, that locker, it's still not working. You you disconnected and it's still not working. That is correct. Okay, there's another thing you can try under the um, under the three dots. You know the the more thing. Go down to more tools, and there's clear browsing data. And you you can clear your history, your cookies, and your cache. First thing I do is clear the cache. Because if you've got some cached thing that's screwing it up, that could be loading and causing problems. Cached images. Yeah, cached images and files. Clear that data. That's harmless. Once you start clearing cookies or browsing history, you're going to notice, like, oh, I have to re-enter my password and stuff like that. So let's not do that yet. Okay. And... And you can, by the way, make sure it's the time range is all time, not just last hour. The default is just the last hour. You want to clear it all. You can even go into the advanced tab and get a little bit more fine-grained on what you're clearing. I feel like there's something, There's it's, a, it's either a bad cache or it's an extension or it's something that Spectrum is doing that interacts with something that's on your system. Okay, the, uh, no, that... Clean up computer. I, what was the next thing you told me to do? I couldn't find it. Uh, in the Chrome, hit the three buttons, more yeah. tools, clear, right. clear browsing data. Oh, the next thing is go to the... So make sure it says all time, by the way, for the time range, not last hour. But I couldn't find that. <coughs> that 
wasn't one of the options. I just <laughs> clear browsing data. There, uh, mine anyway. It says time range, then browsing history, cookies, and site data. If you don't see time range, then don't worry about it. Okay, no, there was that wasn't an option there. Hmm. I wonder why I have that, not you. Okay, let, let me try it. Start again and see if. Are you using an antivirus of any kind? Uh, just uh, uh, Microsoft. Okay, that shouldn't cause a problem. No, I, right, I guess it, I'm into a... Uh, huh. No, they want me to sign into... Well, I've got to sign into Google. Yeah, uh, so we cleared, we cleared, uh, probably cleared a cookie. Which means, yeah, yeah that's all right. You, you'll have to re-sign in, but it'll reset the cookie. See if that fixes it. Um, I'm, the chat room's trying to think of some answers as well, and nobody's nobody's come up with anything different. No, it didn't make any difference. Same thing's happening. Same thing. Yeah. What the heck could that be? And, uh, no, they're, they're telling me to, uh, Spectrum's telling me to, uh, get rid of uh, Google, then start Google again. In other words, Un uninstall and reinstall Chrome. You could try that. I, I think that what we did is probably sufficient. You reset Chrome. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I can use Edge to get, to get there, but I, I just curious if there's something else that happened, why did it happen to me? You know, that, Yeah, and why does it only happen on Spectrum is the bigger question. Right, yeah. I would, uh, I would clear all this, clear, reset the browser, restart the computer, just to make sure nothing's sticking around, disable uh, uBlock Origin for that site, and if you need to, uninstall and reinstall Chrome. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, I try all of those things. I, I'm sorry, I don't have any better solution for you. I don't. You know, obviously that's not a universal problem. Or Spectrum wouldn't be able to charge people for internet access. Well, hey, hey, hey! How are you today, Leo Laporte here, the tech guy? Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo is the phone number. Eight, eight, eight. 827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada outside that area. You certainly uh, can still call. You just have to use Skype or one of those voice over the internet programs. and should be free. should be toll free if you call 8888-ASK-LEO. Back to the phones we got. We, we spent some more time. Uh, by the way, I should just finish up the last call from the last hour. Gerald, uh, who had a weird problem, his Gmail... In Chrome on Windows 10, he'd launch, you know, he'd run Gmail, it'd look fine, but he'd try to open an email and he'd get a big blank white screen. Gmail is a program. It really is. It's not a web page in any real sense of the, of the name. It's on the web, but when you go to Gmail, you're running a ton of JavaScript code. And, uh, it, you know, drawing the page, doing all the things it does, all the functionality. It was it was really one of the very first web applications, what was it, 12 years ago when it was created 13 years ago, more than that. Um, now, of course, web applications are commonplace. But it's a lot of code. It's, there's a lot of stuff running. The weird thing is this doesn't happen when he goes to the shop and the tech plugs his computer into his cable or uh, Internet connection. It works fine. It's only when he's at home on his Spectrum internet connection. So that's then. Then you get to put your deer stalker detective's hat on and start thinking. Well, what's the difference? You know, Spectrum is clearly the the biggest difference. The computer's the same. The software's the same. What is Spectrum doing? The problem is, and this is always a problem with figuring out and troubleshooting uh, technology. Is yeah, you could say, well, something Spectrum's doing, but if it were logic would tell us spectrum would have a problem because a lot of people use gmail it's the number one mail service in the world so if for some reason this spectrum cable didn't work well with gmail they'd have to fix it so clearly most people aren't having problems hmm okay so it can't be spectrum alone oh it must be some sort of interaction between his internet service provider 
and the way his particular computer is set up, something unique, because his particular computer works fine on other internet connections, and Spectrum works fine with for other people, we can presume. So it's something about Spectrum and his computer. Now, well, that's complicated. Now, that's a hard one to figure out. What could Spectrum be doing? Well, unfortunately, we know that a lot of internet service providers, the big ones, the bad ones, not the good ones, but the big bad ones, will intercept your connections uh, and, uh, and do things, <laughs> mess with them. Now, it's tough to intercept Gmail because Gmail is encrypted, HTTPS. And in theory, Spectrum can't interrupt or get involved or see what you're doing. They can only see you're going to Google, to going to Gmail, but they can't see anything else. That's good. We like that. And, and in, order, in order for Spectrum to see into that, they'd have to do something that you'd see, that you'd notice. They'd have to do what we call a man-in-the-middle attack and change your certificate. And the certificate on your Gmail account would no longer belong to Google. It would belong to, it'd belong to Spectrum. That would be the only way they could do that, and they'd have to put some software on your computer to do it. It would it'd be hard. It would be annoying. It would be problematic. Which is not to say that Internet service providers don't do similar things. They're man-in-the-middling often with non-encrypted uh, connections, sticking ads on pages and things like that. It's incredibly annoying. They say, oh, we need to do that because, uh, you know, we have to be able to pop up something if your service is going to be, you know, impacted by something we're doing, that kind of thing. We have to pop things up on your browser. So in order to do that, we have to intercept your browser traffic and inject. It's code injection, it's called. But in theory, you can't do code injection on a Gmail page. Nevertheless, <laughs> you wouldn't put it past them to try. If it were a bad, people are saying in the chat room, oh, he's probably got a bad version of Chrome. Well, it's not that by itself because it works fine at the uh, shop. It only doesn't work when he's using his computer on Spectrum. So something Spectrum's doing and something his computer's doing, and I'm not sure. Uh, what we've kind of came up with was, well, you know, clear, reset your Chrome browser, or better yet, well, actually, first I'd reset it. Not clearing everything, but certainly clear any data cached, that kind of thing. If that doesn't fix it, you can uninstall Chrome and reinstall it. The reason I say reset at first is because uninstalling, reinstalling doesn't actually get rid of the caches and all those. those the data is preserved. You'd be just installing and reinstalling the app. Uh, nevertheless, that might be something else you'd want to try. Somebody suggested in the chat room, reboot the router. Yeah, that's a, Now we're getting into voodoo territory. When, you can't, when, when, when your Sherlock Holmes cap is on and you can't, you know, you, you're trying to make sure every all the logical chains are connected. But sometimes you can't, and so you make a leap. And sometimes the leap is based on nothing. <laughs> like, well, it's an internet connection, so let's see if rebooting his router would fix it. That's a little voodoo. But it's an easy thing to do. Wouldn't hurt. Reboot your router. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe maybe it's something not, not Spectrum, but something your router is interacting with. Uh, with your computer. He uses an ad blocker, which is very common. That also has a lot of it. In fact, any security software, anything that's uh, intercepting the incoming traffic from the internet and, and changing it, <clears throat> whether it's Spectrum, an ad blocker, or security software, any of that could be culprit. <clears throat> so uh, we're, we're, trying, we're just trying different things at this point. Using using as best we can logic, and this is a process I, I I often like to talk about how we do this kinds of stuff. And when I say we, I don't just mean me. I mean tech people try to solve these problems, and it usually is this kind of deductive process, this troubleshooting process of eliminating one thing, then another, and another, until you get to the root cause. It's a challenging one. It's a challenging one. I mean, try you know, try make sure all ex browser extensions are disabled. Disable any security software you're using, any any ad blockers. Reinstall Chrome, reboot the machine, all of those things. It's the kind of thing you try. And then sometimes leap of faith, like rebooting the router. Janice in Van Nuys. Hi, Janice. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo, you are the guru of <laughs> the gurus. Thank you. Are you a guru? I am a self-taught guru. As am I. Um, I've uh, 
really liked computers. I just had never taken a class or a course in them. I figured it out on my se- by myself. So when you're talking about firewalls and ad blockers and routers and uh, programs and things like that, I, I kind of know what you're talking Good. about. Great. But on the other hand, I, I don't have the sheepskin. I still feel lost. Yeah, sometimes. I don't have a sheepskin. Are you kidding? I was a Chinese history major. I, and I didn't finish that degree, so. So you can read you can read the directions how to put the IKEA furniture together. Uh, yes, that's right. I do understand that, but I but the, the one advantage I have maybe you have this advantage too. But I started doing this in the very earliest days of computing, of personal computing, in the in the seventies. So by virtue of trying everything, breaking everything, and living in an era where no one knew anything, I've I've kind of acquired some some. Street smarts, I guess, is the best I could say. Uh, you acquired a lot more than me. <laughs> but that brings us to our point today yes. is um, uh, at my age, which is 60 years old, I am going to have to go back into the market uh, being let go of my other job. Let me let me take so a we'll break because I, I want to give you some time on this. And we're running out of time. So hang on because I think this is a good subject. A lot of people, a lot of people in your boat and uh, are interested, what can we do? What skills can we learn? So hang on. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hang on the line. We're going to talk to uh, Janice a little bit longer. Hang on, Janice. About a second career. Where, where to go? If you like tech, what's next? Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So, you know, this is kind of about the size of a six-inch smartphone here, right? But it's just got a full keyboard on it. I know that there is, I can tell there's a, Screen protector. I don't want it, but I can't find a lip to... I hope I'm not breaking it. But this just doesn't feel right. Maybe it's... Maybe maybe you're not supposed to take it off. Here's the... Wow. This is the most elaborate sim puller I've ever seen. Where do you put the cover removal tool? Oh, right in there, huh? Okay. And then snap. That's not... That's That's scary. I gotta do it to put the sim in. Oh! All right. So that's where the sim goes. No, here's where the sim goes, and here's where the SD card goes. Good. Janice is on the line from Van Nuys. Janice is looking for work at an advanced age. You you forgive me for saying that, right? It's the truth. I'm older than you, and I call it an advanced. I'm 61, so we're in the same ballpark. Very hard, though, as you've already learned, to get a, a job as a 60-year-old. 60, 60 yes, especially coming from the field I was in, which required no college education. It was more of a physical job, but yeah. it was something that I liked to do, which was organization and inventory purposes. So... I have been, uh, I have some money, some funds, a voucher, Good. and so I'm looking into uh, schooling, and I think I've picked out a few. Good. And the, the computer, because I want to work from home, uh, is what I'm looking at now, and I know you are the most up-to-date person on, on this subject, too. What I'm going to be doing, what I'm looking at doing, is uh, medical billing and coding, accounting, and ah. then maybe some computer webbing, designing Great. kind of things in the computer field. Those three areas. Great. That's exciting. It is. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. And so you have some retraining money, which is good. Yeah. Um, and you know you want to work at home, so that's good. There. Are, uh, what's interesting is how many jobs now allow you to do that. That's become very common. In fact, most that's customer funny. service reps now are working out of their are their home. That's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. So that's why I'm looking into these three areas of schooling. I kind of sort of have it figured out. It's the laptop part of it. I have only up to a thousand dollars for a well, laptop. That should be plenty. plenty that's what plenty. I think. Yes. So I want you to get a laptop because you may need, you're going to certainly need it for school, but you may even need it for the job after that. Um, yes. You would think that they would provide a laptop, but I think a lot of these jobs, they assume you've got your own. That's it. They do provide some sort of an iPad kind of a, a device if you pay um, very much more money for the trade yeah. schools. Yeah. 
I found I have found that out. The trade schools. That's why they charge so much too. Oh, they're so expensive. They are I've, ridiculous. I voted those out. Yeah, I voted those out. So um, I'm going to recommend. Into- I'm going to recommend a business laptop. You you want a business laptop? You're right at the edge of what you can get a good business laptop for. Uh, and the reason I say business, the consumer laptops are not as well made. Uh, they're cheaper, but they're not as well made. And so uh, I'm, I've am i been looking at, and I think this would be perfect for you. If I even have to go over a thousand, you I'm won't. willing to do that. You won't. Well, maybe when you add tax. But I'm looking at uh, an I, a, a Lenovo ThinkPad, which is a really well-made, robust, very usable business class computer. Um, and I'm looking at it. Uh, the base model for uh, the ThinkPad T480, which is their newest one, that's going to be an i5, 8 gigs of RAM. The good news about Lenovo is they're easy to upgrade. So down the road, if you want more memory, you can add it. It's not a super okay. great screen, It's uh, you know, it's but it's $859. Okay. And it's uh, Windows 10, and it's going to be a very nice Windows 10 machine. And the thing about Lenovo is it's easy. There's a brisk market for upgrades aftermarket for upgrades it's easy to upgrade unlike a lot of laptops ultrabooks especially which are sealed and glued together the other thing i'm going to suggest you look for lenovo has a site called the lenovo perks site p-e-r-k-s it's aimed at businesses that want to offer lenovo laptops when i've learned about lenovo because i'm a big fan i have three uh, is that Lenovo's retail list price is only a suggestion. That on almost every case, people who buy them buy them at a discount, a significant discount in some cases of 33%, sometimes on Black Friday or maybe the 4th of July, as much as 50%. Oh. So that will give you, basically, I would stay at your price point, but I would use the discount to get more. Like a better screen would be the first thing I'd do. This is a, I'd get a 1080p screen. So their 1080p uh, Lenovo T40, 480 is uh, $1,200. But with the discount, I think it'd get under 1000 So here's what you're going to oh. do. I'm not going to tell you how, what to do, but I'm going to tell you, well, I'm going to tell you how to do it. Because <laughs> I don't know, this is a little gray area here. Because you don't work for a company with Lenovo perks. But oddly enough... The Lenovo Perks site and the web and the code for it are widely distributed on the internet. <laughs> I don't think this is any worse than using something like Ebates to find discounts for stuff and using their, you know, discount code. So I'm going to say agree. it's not illegal, but I don't know. So I'm not going to, you know, the last time I checked, uh, there was a working goal. I, I look in the ThinkPad section, uh, subreddit on Reddit for these, by the way. But this is a little insider tip that I learned on the ThinkPad uh, subreddit. Is look for the the Perks site. The you know that's easy to find, and then look for a recent Perks code. And the one I checked last night got thirty three percent off off for T four eighty, which is an excellent deal. And you, this is a got a great keyboard. It's robust. It's 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 going to last you you know a long time. It'll be great for school. But it'll be great for uh, your job too. I really think this is a good one. That that would be excellent. I'll look into that. the The secondary thing is weight. How much does it weigh? About four pounds. Um, this is not. This is. I have a four seventy, which is last year's model. It's about four pounds five. It's not very heavy. They're very nice. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Well, we could go on and on and talk about cleaners and uh, <laughs> slow moving startups and Firefox and Chrome but uh, like, it help me out immensely. Oh Janet, I'm excited for you. This is a this is exciting new uh, life you're headed off to. Yes, a new whole new direction. Yeah. And I it's you know great. I love it as uh, because when you're working out of your home nobody knows you have gray hair. And, That's right. And and I think that really the opportunity, you know, look, we're all going to keep working. The idea of retiring at 65 is getting more and more of a dim memory from the past. Uh, But it's nice to have jobs that you can do where people aren't going to make assumptions about you. I think we're well-aged. I think we're like fine wine. We are, and people (laughs) want me now for my brain than my Well, that's the one thing I might say is, yeah, and isn't that better? 
The one yeah. thing I might say is that you might think about the skills you have and seeing if there's a way to bottle those in a new in a new way, right? Yes, I, I am. I am exploring all of yeah. that. The good news is everybody hates millennials. So, <laughs> <laughs> which is, by the way, not in my experience justified, but it is it is a prejudice you can take advantage of. Thank you for calling, Janice. Thank you, Leo. Have a Good great luck. day. Good luck. You too. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I've become more and more a fan of these Lenovo's. I just really think they're well built. There's a, when you use the Perks discount, a great price. Um, I, I like them. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. And yes, the one in the chat room is the current, one of the current. I'm sure I'm going to get a call from Lenovo saying, you know, you're not supposed to use that. I didn't give it out. I didn't say anything. I just said, you might look. You might look. Just might, you might find something you like. I can't. I don't know. I'm waiting. I decided I was almost. So <laughs> I've been waiting, as I said, for the uh, a new MacBook. That's not going to happen. Uh, I'm afraid that's just not going to happen. And I don't want to wait much longer. And even if it does happen, it won't be an i9 and it won't have Optane. Just the Windows machines are are just you know lapping MacBooks. So I'm just gonna wait till uh, Lenovo comes out with its six core Optane machines, and I will uh, probably buy that. The Gemini PDA screen. Thank you guys are doing all my research for me. Thank you. It's current. It's for shipping, and I don't like it. But how do I get it off? I don't like screen protectors at all. I just want glass. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK. Leo, the phone number. Always, always happy to talk to you and help you through your, your computer woes. Laurie on the line. She's next from La Crescenta, California. Hi, Laurie. Hi, Leo. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Okay, okay. Uh, I have a little bit of a problem going on here with our Microsoft Exchange. Okay. Um, the, the password expired on us, uh, on me, about a couple of weeks ago. And it uh, uh, says that uh, I've tried to, you know, uh, reset it. And it says I have to use our administrator, which was our IT guy. Yeah. Who has since uh, kind of gone AWOL on us. He's disappeared. <laughs> Uh-oh. So, yeah. so the question is... Where this Exchange server is running? Do you have it on premises? Yes. Uh, well, we do have we have our we have our server, um, and um, I I have actually not been connected to our server uh, through my office. Two other uh, the he actually has our email accounts and he runs it. Um, are you, are you a principal at the company? I am. Okay. But, in, but I do not, as he, he has told me before, I am an administrator, but I've tried all my passwords and they do not work. That's not a good sign. Yeah. It might be when he went AWOL, he changed the passwords on the way out the door. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, that's okay, because you have physical access to this, right? Um, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you for, for well, my, well, I'm asking you, okay. where is your server? Is it in your, is it in the office or is it somewhere yeah. else? Yes. No, we do have a server in the office. There's a physical, yeah. you have physical access to the machine that's running the exchange server. That's running. Yeah. We have a physical server in the office. That's okay. Hopefully so, running the exchange. Yes. Well, there's, mm -hmm. so there's different ways to do exchange. You can, you can use a, somebody else's hosted exchange. And then, uh, in which case, the server would be running in some server farm somewhere, and you could call them and say, look, here's what happened. In your case, uh, it sounds like, but this well, is something you need to... Well, that might be what happened, because, I see, I have a physical server in our office for everything else, but I think he is hosting like, the emails, because I do pay him an extra 30 a month to host the emails, I believe. So, if he server. has access to the server, mm -hmm. then you have problems. Okay, so because is there a way to contact Microsoft to tell them? It has them nothing that? to do with Microsoft. No, oh, okay. He's running software that Microsoft made but doesn't control. Ugh. And if he's running it on a computer in his house or it's his account on some mm -hmm. server provider, you're going to have a difficult, it has nothing to do with Microsoft, they can't help you. 
It's gonna. It's a question of figuring out where that server is. So, what what's happened here is you've let this guy control own your mail, mm -hmm. and yeah. he's proven to be untrustworthy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it sounds like he's malign. He's malignant because he sounds like he's changed the passwords on you. Okay. Which means you've lost your email. Now, is the email address uh, an address you own? Yes, it is. It's, it's your company. Correct. So one thing you probably want to do right away is go to the company, the registrar for that domain name. I hope it's in your name. Mm -hmm. And change it to point somewhere else. Because even as we speak, all the email that's being sent to your company is going to that server. Does he want money? Has he said anything about this? What happened? No, he, he just will not contact. We we phoned, we've emailed, we've written letters. He will not contact us. So I didn't know if if, if with this mail, I was I was going to just hire another IT person, but I didn't think they would have any access to it either. Well, that's the question, and you probably do want to get somebody a good IT person, mm -hmm. and he can track it down. He can. I can't do it from here, but he can look and see where the server lives. Okay. And and see if it's at this guy's house mm -hmm. or if this guy, uh, you know, if, uh, look, it, running an exchange okay. server is a special breed of animal. Most IT guys don't want to do that. And so what they will do is use a managed ser uh, hosted service provider. And if that's the case, you can probably call this company. You'll have to find out who it is that's doing it and say, look, this guy is absconded. But it's our look. I can prove that this is my company. This is the company's name. This is our domain. Uh, I need you to give it to me. Give me control. Because mm -hmm. what happened? You know, maybe he got hit by a bus, but it doesn't sound like that. Because if all the passwords no longer work, that means he went in and changed them. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, you need to get today. <laughs> you okay. need to find uh, somebody, an expert. There's probably in your town. Uh, look for somebody who is a managed service provider. That means an okay. IT contractor. And you want somebody who's got good references, you know, Better Business Bureau and all that. Uh, we have we don't have a full-time IT guy. We have a guy we absolutely trust who is a managed okay. service provider. He hosts, he works for other companies as well. He, okay. we, we get him 20 hours a week or something. Uh, and he's great. And okay. uh, so you need somebody like that who really knows what he's doing because the first thing he's going to go do is going to look at the MX record. That's the pointer at your domain name that says where that server lives, where it's going. And if it's in, 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 in best case and most likely case, it's going to a company that does this. That's good. If, it, if the guy's got it in his closet, this is going to be much more challenging because <laughs> all your emails in his closet. But more likely, the guy just contracted with somebody and didn't tell you. You should look at your bills. You would have be, you would be paying a monthly fee for it. Maybe that fee you're paying him goes to it. I don't know. Yeah, right. No, I'm I'm paying him, and he might be paying them. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm paying him for yeah. each email. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so the way usually it goes is you pay a couple hundred bucks a month or whatever. You might pay a per seat license for a company that does hosted exchange. And, um, and if that's what he did, which is likely because most people don't want to run an exchange server in their closet, uh, mm -hmm. if that's what he did, then that's not going to be a problem. You're going to might have to go through a legal process, but you're going to have to, you can go to that company and say, look, this is what happened. It's not, a, I'm sad to say, it's not an uncommon circumstance. They'll say, okay, mm -hmm. but you have to prove that you, are the rightful owner of this email, which mm -hmm. you can do because you own the domain, mm -hmm. and uh, the guy absconded, and they'll reset the passwords, and you can get all access to it, and you want to lock him out. Okay. Okay. Um, well, so that's well, what that's you know the problem is people. I I understand it. You don't know anything about yeah. technology. You hire somebody to do this, but this guy has he wields immense power. Mm -hmm. He controls your business. He has your data. And uh, so you, you got to hire the right person. Right, right. So to find a managed server provider in Pasadena, that's where the, uh, the business is. Yeah, oh, that'll be easy. There'll be lots of them. Okay. And maybe okay. if you have other people run their own businesses, you ask who they're using. You need somebody today. I know it's Saturday, but you need somebody today. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. what's yeah. happening is that there's still mail going to your email. 
Oh, yeah, I know. It yeah. shut down. It shut me down for the last week or two. I, you oh, know, my I, gosh. <laughs> yeah, so what, what we hope is it's not going to his closet because if it is, then you're going to have to get mm -hmm. law enforcement involved and, you know, you have to sue him and you're going to have to get somebody to go and break in his house and get it or whatever. But more likely he's using a provider that you can then uh, uh, talk into. Okay. You know, doing this. I don't know. I hope he's okay. But the fact that he's changed the yeah. passwords is a not a good sign. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> not well, a thank good you. sign. I hey, I good. Maybe there's a way I could break in. No, no, yeah. no, no. I'm afraid okay. not. There's okay. no. There shouldn't be a back door in the Microsoft Exchange. That would be a major security problem, right? You don't want a back door in your email server. Wow. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Get hire a good IT guy and pay him well, right? Burn, baby, burn. We're setting the place on fire. It's a disco inferno. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> when I hear disco music, I think of Dick D. Bartolo, Mad Magazine's maddest writer. Maybe it's because his shirt is open to his navel and he's wearing the chains and the little Italian cornu. Maybe it's the white <laughs> leisure suit and the white platform shoes. I don't know what it is, but I think of you, Dick D. Bartolo. Well, good. This Very song, good. I, bet, I own all those things. <laughs> I bet you do, and you probably own this is this song on a on an EP as well. Dick is uh, Mad Magazine's maddest writer, and we call him our Gizwiz because he brings us gizmos and gadgets each and every week. I wanted to show you one I just got in the mail today. Yes. I bought this on Indiegogo months ago. Anytime I buy a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo, <laughs> you wonder. I want. I first most of the time I never get anything. And then, but it's the gift that keeps on giving because sometime down the road, a year later, you get something in the mail and you go, oh, I, I ordered that in 1994. <laughs> this is actually really cool. It's from a German company yeah. called Planet, what is it? Planet Computer. Planet Computers. Do you remember the Scion? The, the Wasn't pocket that computer, a, a, remember a that? A very small computer. Yeah, it was yeah. the glass, size of a glasses case. Yes. I love my Scion 3A. I just loved it. And yeah, then they, I had the Atari portfolio. Which was just like this, that? right. Yes, exactly. So this is, an, in a way, an homage to the Scion 5 or the Atari portfolio. It's, got a, it's the size of a 6-inch Android phone, running Android 7, but with a really nice keyboard. I was just going to say, that's a spiffy keyboard. Very usable keyboard. And you you can put a SIM in it. You can put an SD card in it, it. You can take phone calls on it. It's a phone and a pocket computer. I it was seven hundred bucks, which is cheaper than a top of the line Android phone. Yeah. And we'll just we'll just see. We'll just see. Nice. Yeah. I, I like it. I like it. Yeah. So I just thought I'd mention this. Uh, yeah. No. It's on I think Indie it's good. Go -Go. It's the Gemini, and I'll have a review for you in the next few weeks, but I'm going to put my SIM in here and see if I can use it as a phone. Now, perfect. what do you... Yes. So that's what I got for show and okay, tell. Okay, so a uh, couple of weeks ago, there was the Great Finds Product Expo. Yes. And having a dog. You, you still have a dog, right? No, Ozzy passed no, away. No, okay. I know, okay. I know you've gone through the same kind of loss. Oh, uh, yes, exactly. Fair exactly. way, but you uh, still have two dogs, right? Uh, just one dog. Oh, okay. Just one dog. You're down yeah. to one. So I I saw the Bark Bath QT yes. from Bissell. Yes. It's a way to vacuum your dog clean. Okay. Wait so, a minute. V yes. Vacuum exactly. your dog? <laughs> yes. Why would yes. you vacuum your dog? Okay, so. Bissell makes vacuum like cleaners. Yeah. All right, so and this four, is and like four that. Buffers. <laughs> buff your bu buff your pup. I guess. Uh, I'm going to sell them that as a slogan. The so you put water bath. in one side of this, yeah. okay, and then you put this no no uh, lather shampoo in it. Yeah. Uh, whatever they call it, and then as you vacuum the dog, it comes with a little rug that you put the dog on. <laughs> so the great thing is you're not near a sink or a tub. Everything you need to vacuum Everything your dog. You, need, you vacuum your dog, and as it lifts the grime, the grime is sucked back out to another part of this little vacuum. And they were not doing it at the show, but they sent me a link. So if you go to my website, there's a link to a video of them cleaning this dog. What the what? Um, 
Yes, exactly. And the, the, the new version is called the QT model uh, for quiet tone. And it is the second version. My guess is the first one must know, have been pretty loud. Yes. yes. And the, the, the other thing is there's also another video on the Bissell website on how to train your dog to let you vacuum him <laughs> or her clean. OK, you know, you put you put the vacuum in the kitchen, not on. And you let him smell all the parts of it as you give him snacks. And and then uh, you turn it on and let him roam so around. So have and you then the, used this on your dog? No, no. My dog, Charlie, if I turn on an electric shaver, Charlie's three rooms away. Yeah. Charlie is afraid of everything. Uh, so I, but, you I, know, I my, like this because it would pick up uh, loose hair, too, right? It'd be like brush, yes. brushing your dog yes. as well. yes. No, I think it's a very clever idea. If if Fairway was still with me, she would think she would think this is pretty neat. Some dogs wow. actually like vacuum. I've seen dogs actually like vacuum cleaners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Fairway liked to be groomed because she knew that it yeah. made her look good. Yeah. So uh, Fairway was like a Charlie wants vain. nothing. It, unless it was shooting food, Charlie would be no <laughs> good. Uh, so the thing is, just to tell people, it's on Amazon. At, but you want the version that says QT or Gen 2. They're only a dollar apart. The old version is 149. The new version is 149.99. And and shop around. Last week, uh, the outfit called Chewy uh, had a five day special of 99 dollars. I want to get a so. dog just so I can use this. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, I seriously, pretty, if if we had a dog still, I would get this. Especially if you have a big dog. A little dog's not so hard to take in the no, bathtub. That, no, absolutely. Yeah, Charlie, I think I'd suck him right into the yeah, vacuum. Yeah. But uh, Have you ever no, seen... Uh, this might be something to go along with it. This yes. is the puff and fluff. <laughs> oh, you know what, Leo? Someone just... Is that the... the, the it was invented dry? by a, like a 14-year-old girl. It, you know those hair dryers? Remember the old days where you'd get in the yeah, hair dryer and it puff up on your head? This is the whole dog, this isn't is, it? Yeah, I don't... Yeah... Yes. Now, I have a photo of that I'm going to use on the Gizwiz because it broke me up. It looks like the whole dog is in this big inflatable yeah. bag. Yeah. Yeah, the puff and fluff. There you go. And now yeah, on right the on front, the it says, as seen on TV, okay. And then it mm -hmm. says, voted top 10 dog dryer. In how, how many dog dryers are there? I think there's one. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, in the top one. 10. The top 10, exactly. Exactly. Voted top ten. Ten, yes. Um, and then the, it has a picture of a pug dog. Looks like a in a sumo outfit because it's just yes. pu puffed up all you, around. You used to have a sumo outfit that you could, if you fell, a little blower in it. Yeah, fall down, it didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a perfect. That's the perfect. So compliment we get the Bissell Bark Bath QT and the Puff and Fluff dog dryer, and and then your dog is set. Will be yeah. the cleanest dog uh, in town. <laughs> You'll find uh, more information about the bark bath at uh, Dick's website. Dick's uh, website is gizwiz, G I Z W I Z dot B I Z. And uh, just click the link that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guy. But there's all sorts of stuff on the website. It's a lot of fun, including all the other gadgets he shows on World News Now and, and other places. And, and you can play the What the Heck Is It game. What the heck is that? Wow. What? If you uh, if you want to win an autographed copy of Mad Magazine, all you have to do is come up with a clever excuse for why <laughs> what this thing is, and uh, you can win. Gizwiz.biz. You might also want to check out uh, Dick's great podcast at gizwiz.tv. And just Perfect. Click, click the what? Let me just see. It's, it's still that thing. Yeah, it's like the paper tape yeah. with the... I don't know, a tongue depressor for an elephant. I don't know what it is. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah. Gizwiz. Biz. Thank you, Dickie D. Okay, buddy. See you next week. Dancing Bye. on out of here. Our disco guy. <sighs> I want to thank our uh, musical director, Michael Cozio, who did a great job today playing some great music. Kim Schaffer, of course, for answering the phones. Thanks to all of you for calling in. I will be back again in, uh, in either a week or tomorrow, depending on... <laughs> on where you're listening soon soon don't forget that we do have a website though you can always check it out for answers and audio and video from previous shows and it's free there's no sign up techguylabs.com that's kind of a great resource if you uh, if you heard something on the show and you want to get a link or if you heard something and you said i know a better way i always want to get that input 
you can leave a comment at techguylabs.com. Thanks for being here. Enjoy the weather wherever you are. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Have a great geek week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week at Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security on Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.